whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state law. agencies agree that one of the most difficult criminals to apprehend is the first offender, the man with no previous record, who plans to strike once, then disappear. On February 3rd, two such men set out to commit their version of the perfect crime. While doing so, they endangered the lives of hundreds of innocent people. time. Yeah. I got lucky. Old man at own store invited me inside. Inside for what? Saw me looking around, so I gave him a song and dance about needing a new pair of shoelaces. You sure he didn't get suspicious? Nah. But he would have. I didn't think of something like that. You know, he wouldn't let me pay for the laces. So he didn't believe on doing business on Sundays. So what's he doing there? Take an inventory. Say he did most of it last night. Did you get a good look at the safe? Yeah. Looks like it would be hard to crack. Not with what we're gonna use. What's the matter? You sure there's over five grand in it? Look, I wouldn't have got you all the way up here if I wasn't sure. He keeps the money in there so he'll have it to cash the aircraft company payroll checks on Monday mornings. Any more questions? No. Now look, Frank, stop worrying. I know what I'm doing. I've had this thing planned for three weeks, ever since I found out where we could get the dynamite. I told you it sounded good. It's foolproof. Are you sure you remember what to do? Yeah. I follow you out to where we leave my car. From there we go in the truck. Right. Now, the watchman knows me. So you do the driving. After you take care of him, we get the dynamite. Right. Okay, let's go. Seven nine four three oh. The owner says he's been missing two days and wonders why I haven't found it. All right, what'd you tell him? Same thing I told him yesterday, that we're all doing our best. Just ahead.
bank. Here's the invoice. Open come on, it, buddy, come on. Come on. I'm sure. Look, there's nothing in here. Open it, one. Yes, sir. Just give me a moment here. Now turn around. Mister. Turn around. Come on, come on. All right, Joe, come on. Just like I said. Yeah. Sure you know how to handle this stuff. Spent two years with it in the service, didn't I? Go on, grab a couple. Please. You better take this, Mr. Matthews. Thanks. Matthews. Oh? How much dynamite was taken? Did you get the license number of the truck? Oh. The description tallies with the one that was stolen from the Dumont Plumbing Company. I need to be on this right away. Look, who's your foreman, your boss? Who do I get in touch with in case of emergency? Mr. Sharp. George Sharp. Uh, 1456 Esley Road. All right, fine. Hold on. You pick Sharp up. I'll see you at the construction company. Right. Thanks very much. truck. We'll be back in the big city before they find this one out here. 3016 to headquarters. Headquarters, bye. Victor, Mr. Sharp, the Merrill Construction Company foreman. We're leaving for their office. Inform 2150. 10-4. 10-4. Headquarters to 2150. Twenty one fifty, I do not read you. Please call in. Dynamite caps. 
I think I better use my regular way. Fuse on a regular cap. These, these new ones are tricky. If I ever see the guy that did this, I'd know him right enough. Would you recognize the second guy? Never got a clear look at him. Well, he must have been in the truck. Could have been. I didn't see him. Oh, Mr. Sharp, this is Mr. Matthews. How do you do? You men work fast. I was trimming the hedge. Next thing I know, we're out on the highway. How do you feel, Henry? Pretty good, sir. Will it be all right? Good as new. Fine. Understand they took some dynamite. Yes, sir. What about the detonator caps? Don't know. Better check those caps right now. Bad? They've taken enough to blow up a city block. Tell me something, what kind of dynamite are you using on this job? Bag powder, 40% ammonium nitrate. But I'm more concerned about these detonator caps. Why? We're using them up in Sand Canyon to set off the larger charges of dynamite. It's rough going. It'd be tricky getting out if we set a regular fuse. These nitro caps were wired yesterday to go off by radio signal. Radio? Oh, that's why I saw the sign on the road, radio. You can't use a radio transmitter in this area at all, right? That's right. If you were to turn on the transmitter in your car right now, this thing would blow my hand off. Imagine what would happen if there was some dynamite near it. In other words, any kind of a, a radio signal would set this thing off. Well, naturally, we have our own frequency, but these things are new and they're tricky. If they get within a few hundred yards of a strong signal, they'll go. And when they do, off goes the dynamite. Oh, thanks, Heaps. Shut down every radio transmitter in the area. Commercial jobs, ham radio operators, all of them. What about our patrol cars and headquarters? All of them. We can't use our radios. How are we going to communicate? Look, if those guys switch cars and start cruising alongside of us, we won't even know until we go up in pieces. We've got to find some way to warn these guys of the danger they were in. See, how about that radio station over in Grand Way? Car radios pick it up here without any trouble. I can have headquarters call their manager, tell them to broadcast a warning every 15 minutes. A signal from there wouldn't be close enough to detonate those caps. Go to it. Why would they take that much explosive? I don't know, but I got a hunch we're going to find out. Operator, give me highway patrol headquarters. <laughs> we got it. Come on. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> deadly cargo of 37 nitroglycerin detonator caps and two cases of dynamite could be set off by a signal from almost any radio transmitter nearby, including those used in highway patrol cars, ambulances, and other vehicles equipped with two-way radios, the two criminals congratulated themselves, certain that they had committed the perfect crime. What's the matter? I just happened to think. That night watch was probably given a description of me by now. So, male, five feet ten, black hair, 175 pounds. That description fits half the men in this town. Now, come on, I'll finish packing. We'll split the loot, get out of town casual like. No strain, no pain. Who's there now? Safe at the Milford General store was born 10 minutes ago. Anybody seen leaving the store? Negative, no witnesses. All right, instruct all units to keep an eye out for the panel truck. Tell them not to use their radios under any circumstances. Stand for them. They didn't waste any time. No, they're working fast. Are you going to list your personnel handy addresses, phone numbers? Not out here. Personnel department's the main office in the city. Did you make one up for me? Well, could I suppose? I'll do that. I'll be back. Come on, let's get to town. Take it easy when we get back to the city. Start spending this too fast. Somebody's liable to get suspicious. Where you got it? Yeah, yeah, I know. Relax. We got nothing to worry about. Yes. Yes, that's fine. Thank you very much. I would go. Just a moment, please. We've contacted all but three of the ham radio operators. They've shut down. The missing three show nobody home. 
Oh, that's great. That's all we need. Keep contacting them every two minutes. Let's hope they answer before they get in the air. I got it. Highway Patrol. Where? What about the dynamite? All right, keep calling in every 15 minutes. Okay? Tell all units, stop looking for the panel truck. 1330's found. He's going to bring it in. So they switched cars. That's a tough break. Well, that's funny. We don't know who or what we're looking for. Well, maybe they hear that broadcast from the station over in Grandway. Well, tell me something. What about the roadblocks here? Well, all cars heading out of town are being stopped and searched. We've got 3540 and 3516 on the south road, 1450 on Highway 11. Didn't hear in there. You know, if they make a run for it, we got a chance? Providing they still get the dynamite with them. Yeah. Notify all units in town. Check every car with two men in it. Check them out good. Yes, sir. We won't make many friends stopping all the townspeople. I have news for you. We can save a lot of lives. Oh, well, the units telephone in. Better remind them. Keep the receivers open. There's no danger in that. If we find these guys, they may need some help in a hurry. Let's get on the road. Come on. To the thieves who stole several boxes of high explosives from the Merrill Construction Company. Your lives are in danger. Repeat. Your lives are in danger. The detonator caps will explode when near a radio transmitter. To save yourselves, call the highway patrol immediately. This warning will be broadcast every 15 minutes. Somebody who knows this area pretty well. Knew there was a lot of money in that safe over the weekend. Knew where to get the stuff to open it. Could it be someone who works in that store? No, I don't think so. What about food? Everybody bring their lunches here? Some do. There's a caterer's truck, comes at lunchtime. Murdoch's. Murdoch's? That's the largest. Chances are he serves the factory near that general store, too. Do you know the driver? Not the new one. New one? Yeah, Joe, the regular man, hasn't shown up in about a week. We're going to find out why right now. who stole several boxes of high explosives from the Merrill Construction Company. Joe, you hear that? Your lives are in danger. The detonator caps and dynamite stolen will explode when near any radio transmitter. To save yourselves, call the highway patrol immediately. We gotta get rid of that stuff. You think that broadcast is on the level? Could be. No. They want us to believe it. They want us to panic. It's their only hope of finding us. But Joe, we... that stuff so dangerous. Why hasn't it gone off before this? I don't know. I don't know. Thanks. See you. You want me to drive? No, I'm okay. I'm okay. Talk to the manager of the catering company. What about Hodges having a car? He wasn't sure. Well, take a look at this. This cinches it. I'll talk to neighbors, see if anybody saw him leave. Take off. This is Matthews. Hodges, our boy. Relay this to all the units as they call in. You talking to headquarters? Yeah. The apartment manager saw Hodges and another man leave in a light green two-door sedan. 
How soon will the units on the South Road be phoning in? Any time now. What about the units on Highway 11? Not due for another 10 minutes. We can't wait that long. Our 1020 is the roadblock on Highway 11. Come on, let's go. Sedan. Yeah, that could be it. You gonna take a chance? I got him. 2150 to 1450. Don't use your transmitter, just listen to me. Suspect headed your way. Should be there within seconds. Come on, let's get on the move. Turn around, we'll go back. No. You've seen this already. It's too late. What are you gonna do? If he's after us, take care of him. With this. All right, move away from the car. Keep your hands high. What? What's wrong, officer? Drop it, copper. Put a bullet in this dynamite and we'll all go up. Now drop it and move over there. Okay, what'll it be, copper? Move over there, I'll blow us all up. Okay. Okay. Frank, get his car out of the way. Chance. Give up, Hodges. You give up, coppers. Or are you going to put a bullet in this box and blow us all up? I ain't put one on his head. You, drop it. I can get him from here. Drop it. Drop your gun or I drop this stuff. Do what he says. Go on. Drop it. Okay. Now you. Didn't it go off? That's only part of it. 40% ammonium nitrate. You need a detonator cap for that. I think he'll make it. Please. Ambulance. Radio for an ambulance. Well, I would. We're too close to the caps you stole. I can't use my radio. You wait here for the ambulance. All right, come on. Bring him along. Highway Patrol again next week. Until then, remember, reckless driving doesn't determine who's right, only who's left. This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week.
any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. problem faced by the highway patrol is in the enforcement of law in the more desolate rural regions where the occasional communities are not large enough to require the services of full-time peace officers. It was in such a section on the morning of the 18th of August that the highway patrol encountered one of its most cold-blooded cases of murder. Hello, Baldwin. How are you? How you doing, Al? Now, is that any way to welcome old friends? We haven't seen you since you got out. Oh, say, by the way, Al, this is my wife, Dell. I need this here is Al Baldwin. Glad to meet you, Al. What do you want? What do you mean, what do we want? We were just passing through and thought we'd stop and say hello to our old cellmate, that's all. Quit wasting time and tell them what we're here for. Look, I don't want any trouble, Tom. I've worked up a legitimate business since I got out of prison. I don't want any trouble. We don't want any trouble either. The way we got it figured, there won't be any. Okay. Okay, just so long as we understand each other. What's the deal? Any place where we can talk? Find the station. No one can see you from the road. Okay. Frank, you stay with the car. Come on, Dale. Kathy in the house? How'd you know my wife's name? We sort of kept tabs on you, Al. After all, us ex-cons got to stick together, right? Yeah, I, I guess so. Uh, do you mind telling me what you're planning? We've got a cinch job here, Al. I used to work for the farm combine. I know all about how they send a guard through here to make bank deposits for your local farmers and merchants. Now, a year ago, the average summer weekly pickup from 64 farmers and merchants ran better than $12,000. It's probably higher now. Sure, but uh, why does it have to be pulled here? Sid Wells, the guard, hasn't changed his routine in years. The way we got it planned, he's not going to have a chance to fight back. So nobody gets hurt. Well, uh, what about me? What happens when the highway patrol starts coming around asking questions? Wells never got here. Yeah, but what'll uh, he say when I'm telling him that? We can talk about that later, Tom. The main thing, Al, is Wells due here today around noon for a pickup? No. Uh, he won't be by until tomorrow. Well, why not? This used to be the day they had scheduled for a pickup. They just changed it. If you come back tomorrow morning, we're here. Why should we travel 50 miles back to the city when you can put us up for the night? Well, I... I've got a small house. There's not much room. Let's go inside and meet the missus. Hey, Frank! Over at the house. Honey, this is, uh, Del Wright. How do you do? Hello, Mrs. Baldwin. And her husband, Tom. And Frank Jennings. Uh, How do you do? How are you, Mrs. Baldwin? We're old friends of Al. Tom and Frank and I were in state prison together. Oh? They're going to spend the night. I, I told them it'd be a little crowded. Well, we'll do the best we can. All right. Right in there through the arch. One, eight. 
Don't worry about it, Frank. Can't help but worry. Say, look, Al. You better tell your wife what we got in mind, just in case we need her. You know, she's got to have the right answers when the patrol comes around and starts asking questions. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's a, it's a customer. Uh, I'll take care of. Wait, you lying rat! What was all that tomorrow stuff about? That's the combine guard out there now. He was supposed to come by tomorrow. Frank, you follow me out in case I need you. Come on. Dale, come out here. Kathy, you come out here too. Oh, what? All right, stay right where you are. Dale, you stay here with Kathy, and see that she stays here. Sure. All right, now let's get out there. You introduce me as your new helper. Understand? Morning, Al. Morning, Sid. Uh, this is my new helper. Oh, glad to know you. Hi, Sid. Well, what do you got for me, Al? It's, uh, it's inside. I'll get it for you. Well, that's it! All right, stay where you are. There's trouble out there. Get out. All right, let's go. You think you can take care of both of them, Dale? Oh, don't worry about that. Inside, you two. Go on. All right, let's have those keys. You're going to ride inside. Get in. Okay, let's go. Right. So you got the money. You don't need to kill me. You said anything about killing you. Hurry up, Frank. All right, Wells. Now get back inside. That ought to do it. Lock it up. Better drive it up the hill a little way so it won't be so easy right. to spot from the highway. Let's go. Okay. Now, that was dumb. You didn't set the handbrake. We better get that truck out of sight. Now, wait a minute. Here comes a car. We'd better get out of sight. Come on. Looks like it coasted down this hill. Go on up there, see if you see any other tire tracks.
3016 and 2150. Are you on the air? 2150 by. What do you got? Found a body in a panel truck. Plumber in Valley Circle. Been shot. I'm not too far behind you. I'll meet you there. 10-4? 10-4. 2150 to headquarters. It's safer in here. What happened? The highway patrol spotted the truck. Oh, we gotta get out of here. Uh, use your head. We leave here now, we run smack into their roadblocks. We gotta stay put. Well, yes, but they'll be coming here. So what? As long as the Baldwins don't talk, we're okay. The patrol can't prove anything against us. I look smart, boy. Now, until we're able to get out of here, you and me are going to stick together like glue, understand? I'm your new helper. You hired me yesterday, and I'm here all alone. Get it? One word out of you, and she gets killed. Savvy? Yeah. Okay. Now, show me around outside. I want to look and act like a real grease monkey by the time the patrol gets here. Come on. in the hills. Any tire tracks or anything? No, not a thing. Looks like they took him up there, then killed him. The brakes slipped in the truck and he came back on the highway. Coroner's on his way down. He'll be able to give us an idea how long Sid's been dead. We haven't got time for the coroner. No tire tracks. That means no car. Unless they took to the hills, they got to be in this area someplace. Wait a minute. Maybe they figured on a roadblock and they are holding up around here. Let's check on the guard. Do you know where he stops in this area? Well, let me see. North about two miles is a Daniels farm. All right, check that. What about south? Al Baldwin's gas station. Say, wait a second. What? Baldwin's an ex-con. What do you know about him? Well, he's been down here a couple of years. Cooperative. Never misses a report date. He and his wife seem like real nice people. But he did do time for a stick-up. And there's a lot of ex-cons. That doesn't mean anything. Get on the horn. Have him check the north. Let's go to Baldwin's. Come on. Stop by here. Understand? Just remember your wife's inside with Dell and Frank. Oh, here they come. Now get a grin on your face and act natural. Fortune to meet Dan Matthews, head of patrol. It's Al Baldwin. Mr. Matthews? Oh, this is uh, my new helper, uh, Tom Wright. Uh, Officer Walters, uh, Dan Matthews. How are you? Matthews? Hi, Sarge. Thank you. Anything we can do for you, Sarge? It should well stop by here today. Uh, no, I, I haven't seen him. Uh, why? Well, there's been a little trouble. The combine truck was held up and the driver killed. Sid Wells killed? Yeah, a couple of miles from here. You see or hear anything? Uh, no, uh, nothing at all. How about you? Did you see anybody walk by in the past hour or so? No, sir. I've been busy in the back. How'd you get that bump on your head, Al? Well, I'm afraid I, that uh, was my fault. I, uh, I was lifting the hood. Banged out right in the forehead. Heck of a way to treat the boss, isn't it? That sure is. If you hear anything, let us know, will you? You bet we will, sir. Thanks very much. You said that no one was going to get hurt. real good, boss. Just keep it up. I'm sure we won't have any trouble getting out of here tomorrow. Come on. I'm hungry. Let's get something to eat. What about this Baldwin? Does he live alone? No, he's got a wife, Kathy. She's a real nice girl. She always comes... She always what? Wait a minute. I just thought of something. Kathy's always around. Whenever a patrol car stops by, she always comes out with a cold drink. And that new helper. Al doesn't do the kind of a business where he needs a helper. Let's go back there. How do you figure something's wrong? I don't know. 
Ever since Al moved down here, he's been clean as a whistle, but it just doesn't smell right. I got an idea. I'm going back to Al's place. You join the other patrolman. If I'm not out of Al's place in ten minutes, come and get me. Right. Take off. Dan Matthews was taking a calculated risk in returning to the gas station alone. If the murderers of the farm combine guard were there, he was hoping that this action might cause them to reveal themselves. Want something, uh, Mr. Matthews? Got a job for you. Blew a tire. The car's just down the road. Oh, uh, I'll come up with you. Hey, uh, what about that list of supplies you said you needed, Al? Uh, you gotta write the order today, don't you? If you want to go take care of it now, I'll go along with Mr. Matthews. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, right, uh, the supplies. Uh, you need any tools, Mr. Matthews? Everything's in the car. Well, let's go. All right, let's go. He's taking Tom with him. I don't think so. Not the way they're walking together. Anyway, he wouldn't have come alone for Tom. Oh, Al, what are we going to do? It's all right, honey. It's all right. Take it easy. What's that cop doing with Tom? He blew a tire. Tom and them to change it. Hey, I got a hand to that, Tom. He's sure working things out right. Where are you from, Tom? Up north, sir. What are you doing around here? Well, Al said he could use a helper. I thought maybe there might be a better future for me down here. Oh. All right, hold it. Put your hands on top of your head. Two shots fired. The lab will tell us whether this is the gun that killed the guard. Who else is in this with you? Al Baldwin. It's his gun. He did the shooting. Who else? Nobody else. Just the two of us. Where's the money? I don't know. Al took it. Where's Al's wife? I don't know. Take him away. Looks like your hash paid off. Shall we go pick up Baldwin? No. I don't think he's telling us the whole story. What do you mean? Maybe Baldwin's in this, maybe he isn't, I don't know. But the way Wright was treading on Al's toes looked like he was afraid to let him out of his sight. Wouldn't let him come up here with me. You mean like he's keeping Al as a hostage? Yeah. Well, if that's true, there's nothing to stop Al from talking now. Unless other members of the gang are holding his wife, she might be in the house with him right now. Well, if we go back there without Wright, they'll know there's trouble. Yeah, we can't take him back there, that's for sure. This might work. You're about the same size and weight as he is. You mean you want me to change clothes with him? It's kind of risky. Maybe they're going to notice the difference. We'll have to take the chance. Suppose I keep my face hidden. You could probably block their vision. Well, I could try. It's worth the chance. Change clothes. Be sure you get the car keys. What's keeping him? Was that the truth about that guy taking Tom just to change his tire? I told you it was. Take it easy, Dell. He'll be back. Give him time. Maybe he had a chance to run off without us. That's what I'm thinking. Without the door, not Tom. It's still in the back seat of the car. No. Who is it? A patrol car. Tom in it? I, I don't know. I can't see. Back to the house, somebody's watching. Maybe Wright's supposed to signal him or something if everything's okay. They've seen enough of you. Come on over here. Okay, Baldwin. Get up and get rid of that cop. Well, suppose I can't. That's your worry. I said get rid of him. Sergeant, where's Tom? We got him. He had a gun on him. Come on, Al. Why don't you tell us what's going on? They've got Kathy inside. They'll kill her if you try anything. Who's got her? 
Tom's, Tom's wife and his friend Frank Jennings. I knew the guys in the state prison. They came here today and told me what they were going to do. I tried to warn Sid Wells. That's why I got this knot on my head. But for heaven's sake, don't try anything. They kill Wells. They stand nothing to lose by killing my wife. Relax. Take it easy, will you? Did they see the sergeant? They think it was Tom? Yeah. Suppose you went in the house, told him Tom wanted to see him. Think they'd come out? No. Not both of them. Besides, Frank told me to get rid of you. There's got to be a way to trick him out of there. You'll only get Kathy into trouble. No matter what you do, they'll hold on to her. That's why I haven't been able to do anything. Don't you see? You can't touch them. All right, relax. We're going to make sure nothing happens to your wife. Now, as long as they're holding you in check, you know nothing's going to happen to her. They might think something's going wrong. They might get panicky. You've got to give me a break and get out of here before they think I've double-crossed them. Double-cross? That might work. Suppose they thought Tom was trying to get away. Yeah. Yeah, that, that might do it. They have the money in the back seat. Tom hid it there. All right, here's what we'll do. I'm going to get in my car and drive away. When I'm out of sight, I'll park it and then come back. Take me three or four minutes. Now, Al, I want you to go in the house. You tell him Tom's scared. He's going to make a run for it. Tom, you get in the car. And when you do, have trouble starting it. Now, have you got this straight? Still there, huh? Yeah. I don't like this. If everything's going okay, why is that cop still hanging around? How do I know? Maybe he's just standing there chewing the fat. Al, I know how you feel. I do what you're supposed to do. Don't try and be a hero. We'll get your wife back for you. Everything's okay. Yeah. You go and get Tom. Tell him I want to know what's going on. Tom will come in when he wants to. He don't like nobody to tell him what to do. Oh, never mind. I'll tell him myself. You just watch her. I don't want him to see me talking to you like this. Come inside and I'll tell you. Go on in. I'll follow you. What did he say to the guy on the phone? He said that he'd meet him in town. That he's going to clear out alone with the dough. If he is, I'll get him. Oh, well, we both will. and I'll have this gun on both of you. Now get in. Here. I told you not to be a hero. You could have gotten your head blown off. I couldn't help it. When I saw her shoving that gun at Kathy, I, I guess I kind of lost my head. This is Baldwin. You got a good guy here. Hang on to him. Next week's Highway Patrol story is a very unusual one. I hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember, it isn't the car that kills, it's the driver. This is Bradrick Crawford saying, see you next week.
whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state law. Patrol's responsibility as a law enforcement agency extends to all vehicles on the state roads, even the cars that travel without touching the ground. These are the new cars, fresh from the factory, transported by carriers to specified distribution points. The drivers depend on the highway patrol to forewarn them of all danger elements along the truck routes. But unfortunately, the most dangerous element of all, the human one, is the most unpredictable. Well, it's any minute now. It's on schedule. Maybe he's running on a new schedule. A new route, maybe. You sound like you want it that way. Maybe. You're still worried, huh? Aren't you? Look, nothing's gonna go wrong. Nobody's gonna get hurt. You trying to convince me or yourself? Brad, we've been through this a hundred times. Does the company get hurt? No. They're insured. Does the insurance company get hurt? No, they've been collecting premiums from the company. Yeah, I know, but what about the driver? Well, he wakes up with a headache. We've had nothing but headaches for years, and those cars are... Here they come. Well, it's up to you. What are you doing making me decide? Making me responsible? You scared? Sure, aren't you? There's not another car in sight, Rev. It's gonna be easy. Brand new. Each one of them worth at least three grand. That's more money, and we'll see in a lifetime on that lousy farm. Go on, get that monster out of here. I'll finish this. Okay, I'll see you at the farm. Right. Shelter's license. Who found him? A couple of kids who were hiking along the highway. How was he? He's dead. Fractured skull and shocked. The ambulance attendant said it couldn't have happened more than two or three hours ago. Well, I guess robbery wasn't the motive. Well, Teamsters Union, hmm? He was carrying papers from the Overland Carrier Company. We put in a call to them long distance. And right, when they called back, find out why he didn't have a truck. He had a truck. Somebody had one. There were skid marks on the road. Looked like they were made by a heavy vehicle. Probably a transporter. Sergeant Moore speaking. It's the Carrier Company. I'll take it in the office. and then come out and help me with the carrier.
this whole lousy farm isn't worth half what we got inside that barn. And yeah, nothing's going to be worth anything if we don't ditch this carrier. Look, you drive it, and I'll follow you in the pickup. <laughs> You'd better. With three brand new cars in there, I just hate to have to walk back. You feeling better, huh, kid? Aren't you? be all the information we'll need for the moment. I would like to get a dispatcher's report from you, though, as soon as possible. No, we'll do the best we can. But right, thanks very much. That murder victim, what's his name? Bennett. Well, he was driving a carrier with three new cars on it, regular scheduled route. Well, there's the motive. Somebody knew just what to expect him. And maybe somebody else is waiting for other carriers and other routes. Here's the makes, engine number, and model. Get an APB on it right away. You think it was a professional job? Murder, hijacking, and grand theft, that takes talent. What do we do? Go looking for talent. Okay, now wipe fingerprints off the wheel and off the door. Good idea. Think they'll ever find the carrier in this place? Uh, let them find it. It's cars we care about. You know, I never thought it'd be this easy. Yeah, we got plenty to do, boy. It's a lot better than farming. Easier on the back. Listen, we did this for one reason, to make money. Money for a new farm. We're farmers, not hijackers. Sure, but everybody should have a hobby. Skid marks, he must have stopped in an awful hurry. Yeah. Where'd they find the body? In the weeds over there. They sure have picked a good spot. They could have shot him and nobody would have noticed. Why didn't they? It would have been easier. I think they're more interested in stealing cars than killing people. Yeah, it's got a professional look to it, all right. Hey, whoever did this knew what he was doing and how to do it. 2150 to headquarters. Come in, 2150. The lab boys come up with anything on that hijacking yet? Negative. Call records. I want to run down on every hijacking case we've handled in the past three years and tell them to make it fast. Come on, let's go. Yeah, too beautiful. We're gonna mess them up a little. It's almost a crime doing something like that. Get to work. Tires first. Yeah, take off the new ones, put on the used ones. Give them that lived in look, huh? Yeah, I'll work on the tires. You pour some oil on the engines. Make them look like they got some miles on them. What about the speedometers? Don't yeah, worry about that after we get the heavy work done. Put some nicks and dents in the fenders and bumpers, too. You know, I should apologize to you, Phil. Mm, why? Well, for being so worried before. I never thought it'd be this much of a breeze. Well, that breeze is going to turn into an ill wind if you don't get to work. Work? This is a hobby. Hijacking for fun and profit. Turn on one of the radios, will you? Put it on the news. See if that driver's told his story to anybody yet. Good idea. Hey, I said the news. Hey, when are we going to run the ads, Phil? What ads? You know, low mileage, like new cars, sacrifice. Uh, we got to make them look that way first. Sorry, beautiful, but this is bigger than the both of us. Anything on the APB? Yeah, but no results. They've stopped four auto carriers, all carrying the wrong kind of cars. 
Well, give him time. With no leads to work on, Dan Matthews searched the files of past hijacking cases, hoping to find a clue, a hint, anything that might suggest the identity of the guilty parties. And in a ramshackle barn, only a stone's throw from the scene of the crime, Phil and Red Hogan work right through the night, aging the factory fresh cars. Uh, they look pretty good, don't they? Low mileage like new cars. Sold at a sacrifice by heartbroken owners. Let's get some breakfast. Uh. Hey, you better move up the mileage on the speedometers. Oh, after breakfast. You keep driving me like this, I'll go back to farming. You never left. Ah, oh, but I might. This sort of thing pays off faster and better. Don't start getting ideas, little brother. We're farmers, that's our life. Yeah, uh, Pop used to talk like that. He died broke, right here on this farm. Yeah? Where do you want to die, in a prison somewhere? Wait a minute, Phil. Don't start talking like a scoutmaster to me. This was your idea. Sure, my idea. For one job. Just one. So we can raise enough cash to get us a good farm, and then we... Quit. One we... job! What's the difference if you break the law once or a dozen times? The way we do it, nobody gets hurt. You said so yourself. And now the 8 a.m. edition of the news, brought to you as a regular public service feature of this station. On the local scene, residents of Marble County were shocked by the announcement of the alleged murder of a man identified as George W. Bennett, a driver for the Overland Carrier Company. Two children found Bennett's body yesterday afternoon, lying just off the highway about three miles south of Capital City. Investigation by the Highway Patrol disclosed that Bennett had been driving an auto carrier bearing three late model cars when the attack occurred. It is believed that he was the victim of hijackers who apparently halted his car. They're talking about us. Yeah. What are we going to do, Phil? Phil? They want us for murder. We're not murderers. He's dead. Yeah, but we didn't... That makes us murderers. We killed him. But they don't know yet. They don't know it's us. Hell no. We got a barn full of evidence. Well, we fixed all that. We changed them, made them look different. Yeah, you want to take a chance on that? Do you? Look, it's one thing stealing cars. At the worst, you get caught, spend a few years in prison, but once it's murder. When you kill somebody... What are we going to do, Phil? Well, we got to get rid of them, Red. These cars, they'll drive us right into the death house. plan to dispose of the evidence that would incriminate them, the Highway Patrol received its first important lead. A passing motorist had discovered the abandoned auto carrier and reported it to headquarters. Passing motorist reported it. Yeah, I know. What does it look like to you? Just plain mud. Roads as dry as dust. Some straw mixed in with it. Might have been driven through a barnyard. Any farms around here? Two or three. Barnyards are always muddy. Headquarters to 2150. Yeah. Twenty-one fifty by. The dispatcher's report just came in from the carrier company. You said you wanted to look it over. Good. I'll be right in. Have the lab boys come out. I got something for them. 10-4. Johnson. Tell the lab boys I want to report as soon as possible. Right. Hey, hold it, fellas. We're crazy to be driving these cars in broad daylight. At least wait till it gets dark. Yeah, and give the cops a whole day to move in on us. We're listed as killers in their book, Red. Yeah, I know, but if we waited... We... These cars are beginning to smell like the gas chamber. We gotta get rid of them. Well, I'll get one of the other cars. No, uh, you, you follow me in the pickup. Then we can get back here fast and get rid of the others. Okay, okay.
What do you make of this? Mud. That's all? That's all. What about the stuff mixed with it? A little bit of grass, maybe hay or weeds. Lab men back in? No, but here's a dispatcher's report from that carrier company. Here's a complete rundown of the route taken by the carrier. Time elapsed, speedometer reading at time of departure, and all the scheduled stops en route. What's the speedometer reading? 12,740 miles out of what have left the factory yards. Two to go. I hope they don't find it. I'll let them find it as long as they don't find us. Headquarters to 4240. 4240, bye. You still at the carrier? Positive. The lab man left a few minutes ago. Check the speedometer on it. I want the exact mileage. 10 4, stand by. 10 4. Let me check the wall map. Get me the exact mileage from the carrier's departure to where we found the skid marks on the road. to headquarters. Headquarters, by. There's a speedometer reading on the carrier. Okay, shoot. Sure. 12884. Repeat, 12884. 12884. Thanks, that's all for now. 10-4. Uh, how are you making out? I got it. There's where the factory's located. Oh, well, go on. Here's where the crime was committed. Let's see. At that point, the speedometer read 12740. How far is that from the factory? 124 miles. Add that. Well, if the carrier had gone no further than the scene of the crime right here, the speedometer would have read 12864. Where do we find the carrier? Right here. At that point, the speedometer reading was 12884. That means the carrier was driven 20 miles from the scene of the crime. How far is it from here to here? Just about six miles. Six miles from the scene of the crime to where we found it, huh? The speedometer tells us it was driven 20 miles. A six from 20 leaves 14. We'll assume after the hijacking, the carrier was driven those 14 miles. You still with me? Yeah, they drove the carrier someplace to unload the cars and then ditched it. All right, let's make two circles with 14-mile diameters. Somewhere inside those two circles, we're going to find three stolen cars. That's a pretty desolate area. Not many roads, just a few homes and farms. Oh, it narrows it down. Send a unit out. Have them check all the farms, back roads, silos, barns, and... Barns. This is Matthews. Get me the lab right away. I see. All right, thanks very much. Carrie went through a farm, all right. There was mud, alfalfa, and hay on the wheels. 4240 takes the first circle. You and I will cover the second one. Come on. Phil, where can we take them? They don't have oh, much gas. Over a cliff and a lake anywhere. Just take them and leave them. Forget where they are. What if we're seen walking back here? Well, since when's it a crime to walk? I'll meet you right here.
Doesn't make any sense. It's a brand new car, but look at the tires. Hundreds of miles on them. The speedometer's got four and four tenths miles on it. Boy, they sure did their best to make this one grow old ungracefully. That's one way to camouflage them. It's a real professional job, too. All right, let's work it out in geometry. More circles? Yeah, get your map out. I got the circles already made. A is where the crime was committed, and B is where the carrier was found. Uh, where are we now? Right here. I see. Those cars were brand new. That one's been driven four and four tenths miles. And it ended up right here. Yeah. Draw a circle four and four tenths miles in radius. If it crosses one of the bigger circles, that's where the car came from. This one will have to be approximate. How's that? Well, if there's a farm here or here, we're in business. You know this area better than we do. Any farms around here? Well, this one's practically in the middle of the picnic grounds in the reservoir. I'd put my money on the other one. All right, you call the lab men. Have them check the car for prints. Also, check the mud on the tires. Maybe we'll find the same thing we have on the carrier. Let's go. All that work, all night long, and we end up ditching the cars. Yeah, well, if you want to go back and get them, go ahead. That's funny. Real funny. Look, we're clear. We got nothing to worry about. Not a shred of evidence against us. I hope you're right. Phil, the tires. What? These tires are brand new. They'll be able to trace them. Get them on a truck. We'll dump them someplace. Just two more. Mm -hmm. Get your hands up in the cab. He's flatter than the tires. We thought we were dealing with professionals. Oh, they are professionals. And they're going to be paid for the job. Next week's Highway Patrol story is a very unusual one. I hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember, it isn't the car that kills, it's the driver. This is Bradrick Crawford saying, see you next week.
Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. Enforcement agencies seldom encounter armored truck robberies. The armored trucks are traveling fortresses, and the precautious operating procedures used in the pickup and delivery of monies preclude any successful robberies. However, the trucks are tempting targets, and early last July, three criminals started an elaborate plan to rob truck number 15, which made a daily stop at the Shermart supermarket. Don Brueger, an ice cream vendor, also began making a daily stop at the market. After the first few days, his presence was accepted by the guards, and Brueger was able to observe the armored truck's security routine. The first phase of the criminal's plan was in operation. Two weeks later, Rusty Schilling arrived on the scene, an itinerant photographer. He, too, was inspected by the armored truck guards. But as time passed, he, too, was accepted. Step two of the criminal's plan was in operation. By the middle of August, both men had become boringly familiar parts of the scenery. August 20th, armored truck guard Bill Franklin was leaving for work. It was important to the criminal's plans that Franklin work as the inside guard on this date. Well, bye, honey. See you later. Have a nice day. You too. Love you. Morning, Lee. Hi, Betty. You know, I'd be scared too. Scared of what? Watching Bill go off to work. Oh, Betty, don't be silly. You know I never worry about Bill. Well, I would if he were my husband, riding around in an armored truck full of money. Oh, Bill can take care of himself. Safer than he was in the paratroops. <laughs> Tiny Elsom was the silent partner of the photographer and the ice cream vendor. He had found the location and set them up in business. For Tiny, this day would climax two months of careful observation and preparation. His presence on the scene indicated to the others that he had ascertained that the right personnel were manning the armored truck. If the attempt at the Shermart were successful, Tiny was to handle the final phase of the operation. Go ahead. What's the number of the truck? Now, wait a minute. You mean the guard is still in the back of the truck? All right, have him keep calling in. Check his location every once in a while. I'll be right over. Thanks very much. Uh, 
Armored car number 15 was seized at the Sheremont supermarket by holdup men. They're going east now on Route 5. They got a guard barricaded in the back. He's got the payroll with him. It's around 20, 25,000. What other units are in that area? 2133 is way over by the boulevard, and 2118 is down at the bridge construction regulating the traffic. 2107 is the closest. Have 2107 go to the supermarket. Where's 2114? At an accident near the high school. Pull 2118 off the traffic control. Have them join 2133. Go to Route 5 right away. Now, in the armored truck, they got a radio on the back. I'm going over there. If I hear anything, I'll call you. Headquarters to 2107. 2107, bye. 2107 to Shermart Supermarket. A 211 armed robbery. Fifty miles an hour. I figure these guys will stop along here somewhere and try to get me to open up. I got enough ammunition to stall them for maybe an hour. Watch with the highway patrol. Over. The head of the patrol's on his way here now. They've already been notified. He told me to keep checking your position. They've probably got units out tracking your position right now. Mr. Simpson? Yeah, you Matthews. Yeah, that's right. When did he report in? Uh, just a moment ago. Uh, they're on Route 5 headed uh, east. Franklin figures I'll be stopping soon to, to get him to open up. He couldn't be in a safer place as long as he stays there. Yeah. Get my office. I'll talk to Franklin. This is Matthews Highway Patrol. What's your position? We're still on Route 5. We passed the power station about three minutes ago. One of my cars should pick you up in about seven or eight minutes. Another in about ten. Keep reporting in. Okay. Uh, hello, hello. Communications? This is Simpson at the armed car office. Matthews is talking to the guard. The truck's still heading east on Route 5, about three miles past the power station. Anything else? Keep the line open. Nothing else, but keep the line open. Hello, Matthews. We are stopping. What's your position? All I can see is a power line and some trees. One of the holdup men is getting out. All right, stay in there. Don't run for it. As long as you're in there, you're safe. Franklin. Franklin, what's wrong? We can't reach you. I think he's trying to break off that... They broke the antenna. That figures. This is Matthews. They broke the truck's antenna. Last location, somewhere between Miller's Creek and the power station on Route 5. Frank, you know anything about radios? Yeah, of course. Can you rig an antenna inside that truck? Oh, yeah, sure. I'm going to stand by here. Franklin might be able to rig up a temporary antenna inside that truck. If he does, we might be able to pick him up. There's a better chance of 2118 or 2133 picking him up there closer. Yeah, I know we don't broadcast in the same frequency. But 2118 and 2133 are so close we might overlap. So alert him. If we don't find that truck, Franklin's going to get killed. Tell you this, but your husband's been hurt in a smash-up. Bill? Are you sure? He works on one of those armored cars, doesn't he? Oh, Bill. He's probably at the hospital by now. I'm supposed to take you there right away. Oh, I'll be right with you. Is something wrong, Lee? Oh, Bill, he's been in a wreck. Oh, is he hurt? They took him to the hospital.
track the cops? He's wasting ammunition. Nobody can hear him from here. Officer Arnold had questioned the employees and customers of the Shermart supermarket without success. The description of the criminals given by these untrained and excited observers was conflicting and confusing. The guard and driver of the armored truck were more helpful. Both of them agreed on the general description of the photographer and the ice cream vendor. However, no one had noticed any distinctive characteristics that would aid in identifying the criminals. The driver and guard were requested to visit Highway Patrol headquarters and view the mugshots. Officer Arnold impounded the camera and cart and telephoned Dan Matthews to report the negative result of his investigation. All right, ask around some more. If they ditch that truck, all we've got to go on are descriptions. Anything from 2118 to 2133? No, and they probably didn't pick up a signal from Franklin either. All right, tell them to keep trying. Tell them to check on the side road. What's that? A phone call just came in from Franklin's next door neighbor asking what hospital he's been taken to. She's under the impression his truck was in a wreck, but we have no accident report on it. Where'd she get that idea? She said Mrs. Franklin told her about it as she was leaving for the hospital. Let me have the woman's name and address. All right, check the hospitals. Alert 2118 and 2133. Have 2107 go out and help them. Have them check everything on the highway. Farms, garages, cars, everything. I'll keep this line open for Simpson in case he makes a contact. What's up? I don't know. A neighbor of Franklin said Franklin's wife just left to the hospital to see him. That's impossible. Well, the whole thing's starting to make sense right now. They got Franklin in the back of the armored truck, right? Uh -huh. They're not trying to get him out and they drive like they know where they're going. Figure they're going to have trouble with him. They're going to use his wife to get him out. I'm going over and talk to the neighbor. I'll keep trying to raise Franklin. Let me know if you hear anything. Right. Mrs. Linklist? Yes? Matthews Highway Patrol. Now, tell me, what's this about your next-door neighbor? Bill Franklin? Oh, he was hurt in a wreck. Well, what makes you think so? Why, well, I know so. Why else would his wife go rushing off to the hospital? Mrs. Linklist, we have no report of the accident. Oh, well, I can't be. I mean, why would she get in a car with a perfect stranger? What perfect stranger? Why, the one that drove her to the hospital. I would have given her my car, now, wait a minute. But... Is he the one that told her about the accident? Oh, he, he must have been. Mrs. Linkwist, describe him and the car if you can. Oh, yes. Sit tight and shut up. Now, what is this? Just who are you? Oh, just a few more miles and you'll understand everything. I think I understand now. Now, let me out of here. Now, stop! <laughs> let me go! Cut it out. Now, listen, get this straight. We've got your husband, and if you want him to live, you do exactly as you're told. See anything of an armored car down the road? Uh, no, sorry. Okay. Key. Tiny should have been here by now with the dame. Relax, he will be. Well, maybe he couldn't talk her into coming out here with him. Look, Tiny planned this job. Run to this farm, figured out every move. He'll get here. You just keep your eye on that truck in case Franklin tries to run for it. I hope he does.
to 2107. 2107, bye. Be on the alert for a 1955 or 56 green sedan. Driver is tall, fat, wears a gray suit and a hat, has a ruddy complexion. There's a guy picked up Mrs. Franklin. He's probably holding her as a hostage. She's 22, very attractive. She has red hair. 10-4. 2107 to 2150. Car and passengers answering this description have just passed this point. Going east, one mile west of the Hilton turnoff. I'll investigate immediately. I'm not too far behind you. 10-4. Something else comes up. Notify the highway patrol. This is Armor Truck 1-5. I am located two miles north of Route 5 on a dirt road. Turn off at mailbox marked Kingsbury. Please acknowledge. Franklin, you try anything and your wife gets it. Everything okay? It is now. Can you hear me, Franklin? I don't have to spell this out for you. It's a simple choice between that money and your wife. You won't get away with this. There are police all over the area. This is Bill Franklin calling. I need help desperately. I am located two miles north of Route 5. Dirt Road turns off at mailbox Mark Kingsbury. Over. This is Bill Franklin calling. 2150 to 2107, 2118, and 2133. Did you pick up a signal from Bill Franklin? 2107 to 2150. Yes. Shall I reply to it? No, he won't be able to receive you. Find that mailbox fast. I'm right behind you. We can't be too far away. 10-4? 10-4. 2150 calling. 2118 and 2133. Armored truck is two miles north of Route 5. Make up your mind, Franklin. We don't have all day. Okay. Here's the money. Now release my wife. Sid, let's move. But you said you'd let me go! Ah, uh, we still need you, sister. Franklin. The holdup men have gone back towards Route 5. They are still holding my wife hostage. Can you hear me? Come in, please. Bye. All that men have gotten away with the payroll. Holding Mrs. Franklin hostage. Probably heading west on Route 5. I'll block the road. Alert 2133 and 2118 and join me. 10-4? 10-4. Matthews, Highway Patrol. We need your help. Want to use your truck to set up a roadblock. Back it into that hillside there. I'll cover the other side. Side road and hide.
All right, enter the line. Come on with your hands up. Nothing to it. We got a passenger in the back seat. I'm giving you exactly one minute to clear the road. Start now. It won't work. Give yourself up. Let them go. They'll kill my wife. Better let Mr. Matthews handle this. Don't shoot. I'll make him let you go. You can't let him kill my wife, Matthews. Clear the road. I can't. The minute they're in the clear, they're going to kill her. We've got to save her right now. Look, you're kidding yourselves. You're not going to shoot her. She's your protection. 30 seconds. Unless you want this girl's death in your conscience, move that car. Throw your guns out and surrender. Right now, you face a charge of armed robbery. If you kill her, it's going to be murder. Premeditated murder. You'll get the chair, all of you. Hey, Franklin. You're going to let them get your wife killed? Let them go, please. No payroll in the world is worth it. Ten seconds. You're digging this girl's grave. You're digging your own graves. The bluff won't work. A stretch in a pen is better than a chair. Move that car if she gets it. Take a good look at the girl. If you kill her, that's exactly how you'll feel when they throw the switch. Move that car! You'll beg for mercy, but you'll still die. Hold it! Don't shoot! Don't! Look, if he shoots her, I'm not in it. I frisk him. Fly down the road, face down. You in the front seat. You want to stay alive with him? Or die for murder with him? Get behind that wheel. I'll get us out of this. You got ten seconds to move that truck cop or this lady gets it. Lie down with him. You're all by yourself now. If you pull that trigger, you're gonna die. If he pulls that trigger, we'll riddle the car with bullets. Right. Are you gonna move that car? No. We're gonna stay right here till you make your move. Now, come on, let the girl out of the car. Throw your gun out. Come on with your hands on top of your head. Cover him, Arnold. All right, turn around. Put your hands up on the car. I'm sorry. What are you sorry about? For trying to make you let them go. I've never been so worried. I got news for you. Me too. Oh, right, you got the money. Fine. I'll move the car off the road, then I'll call headquarters. Have one of the boys pick it up. Oh, by the way, there's a real scared truck driver hiding down that road. Tell him everything's okay. See the Highway Patrol in action again next week. Until then, remember, leave your blood at the Red Cross, not on the highway. This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week.
of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state law. of violence is always a shock. It is like the sudden onslaught of a hurricane or a tornado. One moment all is peaceful and quiet, and then suddenly nothing is as it was before. But before every violent moment of nature, there is a period of unusual quiet and peace, the lull before the storm. The very nature of a sudden crime of violence makes the police work difficult. There is no real warning, no way of preventing it. It strikes like the violence of nature. Such a crime occurred on the 18th of September. Highway Patrol. Yes, ma'am? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am, I'll get a car right over there, right away. It's a shooting in Masonville. The wife just called. She heard shots, found her husband dead by the front door. Thanks. Headquarters at 2232. It's the second one like this. Second guy shot down without a lead. Why were they shot and who are they? You think they're both part of the same setup? Well, there's nothing else to think. One of them was an ex-con. Run this through records, see what you can find out. If it ties in, we got a lead. If we haven't, we got nothing. It's time, Jerry. He'll be here any minute. I know it. <sighs> Honey, don't let him panic you. He talks big, but remember, there's only one thing he can do. And we'll let him do it. After he's told people, we'll find out who our real friends are. I'm a few minutes late, but I had a call to make before I came here. I can save us both a lot of time. I don't have the money. What's the matter all of a sudden? We agreed on the amount you were to pay me each month. It isn't much. I can't afford it. Things have been tough. I didn't make any overtime this month. Look, Singleton, you're an ex-con. Just the three of us know that in this town. And we made a deal. I was to keep my mouth shut, and you were to pay every month on the 18th. We don't have the money. You got a good job, Singleton. Nice neighbors, lots of good friends. All that ought to be worth what you're supposed to pay me every month. I told you I don't make that kind of money. You must have a lot of guys on the hook who won't miss what they pay you. <laughs> the more they've got, the more they pay. None of them are exactly happy to see me. Listen, I'll give it to you straight, Collie. I don't have the money. I'll give you an hour. I'll be back at 8.30. See that you have the money, Singleton. Every penny. You know, this is a one-way street. I don't just blow the whistle on you if you don't pay off. <laughs> Why didn't you tell him, Jerry? Why didn't you tell him that you never intend to pay him again? I don't know. I don't know. I lost my nerve. Look, if I tell him, everybody will find out I'll lose my job. We'll have to move again. And he'll follow us. He'll follow us. Well, tell him when he comes back. We'll tell him together. I'm not afraid, Jerry. Here. Ties it up into a nice neat package. The dead man was an ex-con. As far as the record show, he's going straight. Yeah, the same as the other one. Anything for ballistics? Well, if they're just one killer for the two men, he's pretty smart. He uses a different gun each time. Yeah, you could always slip up, you know. I wonder what's behind it. Well, we've gone over the records. These two guys never knew each other. As a matter of fact, they never even went to the same prison. And all they seem to have in common is they both have records. Yeah, both are going straight, too. Could it be a revenge killing for a double cross? No, it's got to be something else. What happened to the family of the first guy? And I just quietly moved away. They were kids. His wife had nothing to say. She didn't know why her husband was killed. A report from the Hudson police here says the wife was frightened. They figured she knew something, but she was afraid to talk. Oh, this doesn't make any sense at all. They just chalked it up as an underworld killing. Can't leave it there unless you know why. Get a bulletin out on these killings. Check the other police agencies. See if they got anything along this line, will you? Go on. Okay. 
This is everything in the front closet. Honey, I got a feeling he's not going to let us just walk out. He's got too good a racket shaking down ex-cons like me. He keeps quiet about their records and they pay. They pay. He waits until you're settled, where you got a good job. No one knows you. Well, he can't afford to lay off if I don't come through. He's got to teach me a lesson just to keep the others paying. We'll be out of town before anything can happen. Oh, he's due here now. We're not half packed. It'll be ours. Whatever happens, just be careful. I'm get that in the kitchen. Now, you stay in here. Let me handle him, okay? Okay, let's have the money, Singleton. There won't be any money. Oh, now, I thought you were a smart con, Singleton. Everything I dug up about you showed you were real smart. Real smart, yeah. So smart, I took a two to ten for armed robbery. I thought you knew what was best for you. Now, you pay, or else. Or else what, Collie? Look, you tell my boss I'm an ex-con. You tell anybody you feel like. You think I can just let you walk out? We're not just walking out. March. We're going to the police. We're going to tell them what we've been up against. You know, she's a real nice-looking woman, Singleton. Do you ever figure what could happen to her? Especially if you decide to cross me? Collie, look, what's the point of showing your muscle? You know what I make? You've collected enough from me. Now, why not give me a break? I've got a lot of customers just like you, and not one of them has walked out of me yet. I spend too much time setting up each of you guys. You pay. That's it. But we don't pay. Jerry, is he, is he dead? He's dead. He's dead, all right. And that's the end of everything. Jerry, it was self-defense. You couldn't help what happened. You think the police are going to believe me? Now look at the record, and I'm an ex-con. How many people gave me a chance to go straight, huh? How many times do we have to move? Oh, Jerry, your leg. Sit down. Let me look at it. I can't. I can't. There isn't time. i got to get out of here. Jerry, please. Let me go. Uncall, please. Don't run. Listen, honey, we can't take the chance. You think the police are going to believe me? No, they'll, they'll execute me for murder. Now, we both know that. They're not going to believe me. They won't believe you. You're my wife. If you're going, I'm going with you. I won't let you go alone. I want you to stay. Please. There's a little money in the bank. As soon as it's safe, I'll get in touch with you. Jerry, please, don't run. It can't turn out right. You know it. I've got to do it. But, Jerry, please. Look, if you think the cops will believe you, you call them up. You'll find out. <laughs> Operator, get me the highway patrol. Just a moment, ma'am. Miss Matthews, it's a woman reporting a killing. She's a little on the hysterical side, but she said her husband shot the man in self-defense. Give me the address. I'll take it. Thanks. Yes, ma'am. We'll have the man over there right away. Yes, ma'am.
Mr. Singleton, we'll give your husband every break we can, but we're going to have to pick him up and bring him in. Can we use the phone? Yes. Ken and APB. Jerry didn't fire the gun. It went off in the struggle. We're going to prove that one way or the other. Operator, get me Highway Patrol headquarters, please. Hi, this is Ken Williams. Get out an APB on Jerry Singleton. 6'2", 170 pounds, brown hair, blue eyes, wearing dark blue work clothes, maroon jacket. Has a gunshot wound in his lower left leg. Was driving a 53 black four-door sedan. License number Frank Young Union 514. Get out the roadblocks. And we need ballistics and coroner. How long was this guy blackmailing you? Almost a year. Well, why didn't you come to the police? Do you know how hard it is for a man who served time? Do you know the way people treat us when they found out? Look, I know it's rough on a guy who served time, and I know the people just won't give him a break. We felt we'd rather pay, since no one here knew about Jerry. Quite a list of names. If he was running a shakedown racket, this could be a list of clients. Jerry's wounded in the leg. He'll need medical attention. Why didn't you think of that before he ran? He thought he'd be railroaded for murder. I know why he's afraid, and I know why he ran. If he could only get a break. This time, he's innocent. That man was shot during the fight for the gun. Jerry never even had his hand on the gun. He's got a gun now. Sir? I need some bandages, some adhesive tape, and some sulfur powder, please. Oh, you'll need a prescription for the sulfur powder. Well, what can you give me that doesn't take a prescription? Oh, you need a prescription for any of the antibiotics. Do you mind telling me what you need it for? Well, just give me a good antiseptic then, huh? And the other stuff, please. Say, that's a bad wound. Looks like I... Look, we won't need a prescription. Just get the stuff, will you, please? You make it fast? Wounded, afraid of society and the police, Jerry was running away, a gun in his hand. Now it was up to Matthews to stop him before he used that gun. I'm sorry I had to use this on you. I didn't intend to, but I had to have it for the leg. That's okay, mister. I'll give you what you want. Bandages, adhesive. I'm putting in some gauze pads. You, you put them on the wound after you sprinkle with the sulfur. I know. Help stop the bleeding. You know, a pharmacist is a lot like a doctor. We help anybody who needs help. Me, why, well, I've gotten up at 3 o'clock in the morning, come down here to open the store just because somebody needed medicine. Glad to do it. Like helping you. Glad to do it. No questions. Uh, uh, you're sweet. just another human being to me. There's three dollars there. Will that be all right? Oh, you don't need to pay me. You're in trouble. Here, take the stuff and take back the money. Keep the money. It's yours. I'm in enough trouble as it is. Now, stay put, huh? Till I get outside? Operator. Highway patrol. Fast. Highway patrol. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Kreider. I'll send a man over to investigate immediately. All right, let's tighten up the circle. Have the roadblock cars move in a couple of miles. I think this ties in with the Singleton escape. A druggist in Burton reports a wounded man demanded bandages, adhesive, and sulfur at gunpoint. Description. It fits Singleton. I'll get a car out to Burton right away. Okay. Burton's right here. This report checks out. He's still inside the roadblock. Yeah. Headquarters to 2632. Headquarters to 2632.
Here's the medical examiner's report on Coley. Mrs. Singleton told us the truth. The angle of bullet entered the body, condition of the clothes, and the powder burns indicate Coley was killed by his own gun during the struggle. Well, from this report, Singleton was a sap to run. Even worse to take that gun with him. You know, I'm glad he gave the druggist that money. Of course, he's still got the gun. He had a bad leg, and that's a break. How long do you think he can keep going? I don't know. We don't know how bad that leg is. I wish there was someone who could tell him what we know. Well, he's in that circle. One of our men will spot him. Come on, I want to tighten up those roadblocks. Have the roadblocks moved within two miles of Burton. Yes, sir. I'm not gonna get far with that game leg. Give me two more units. I wanted to cover every road in and out of Burton. I can pull in three units. It'll take three to four minutes to move them in on a search pattern. I don't get it. We should have spotted him by now. He must have stopped and pulled off the road somewhere. Could be holed up someplace. Well, the way you move that roadblock in around Burton, there's not much room for him to slip by. Ken, if you were Singleton, where would you go? Well, I think I'd head for the Rocky Hills up here to the north. That's pretty rugged country. No houses, no farms, just occasionally used for hunting. Hills, you might be right. Come on, let's get out there. Headquarters to 2150. Headquarters to 2150. 2150 by. 2342 just spotted Singleton's car. It's uphill road south of the intersections of highways 14 and 22, about two miles from the intersection. Tell 2342 to hold his position. We're heading there now. 10 4? 10 4. Headquarters to 2342. Headquarters to 2342. Hold position. 10 4? 10 4. Twenty-one fifty to headquarters. Headquarters by. Have a car pick up Mrs. Singleton. If Singleton's holding up on those rocks, we might need her help to get him out. Ten four. Ten four. Looks like he lost a lot of blood. He sure did. Hey. 
Could be his tracks right here. Heading up the slope. Looks like he fell down, too. He must be in pretty bad shape. Let's see if we can spot him around here. But let's keep undercover. You think he'll use that gun? He figures he's going to the gas chamber, so what do you think? Does that answer your question? Yeah. He must be in that cluster of rocks right up there. Let's get back to the car. Mr. Singleton ought to be here by now. Jerry? Hey, he's up there in those rocks. Benny, he's all right? Yeah, he's all right, but he's a pretty bad shot. Please, he didn't kill that man. Give him a chance. The only thing I'm worried about is the chance he's going to give me and my men. Marge. Singleton, come on out of there. Your wife's down here. I checked with the medical examiner. Coley's death was an accident. Sure. Talk me down into a cell and execute me. Throw down your gun! I'm going up. When I'm halfway there, you start talking. Here. Talk to him. Reason with him. If he listens, he'll come down alive. If he doesn't... Is it true what you said about the medical examiner? Yeah, it's true. Tell him that, will you? Jerry, this is Marge. Please throw the gun away, Jerry. Don't fight them. They told the truth. They won't accuse you of murder. They can prove you didn't kill that man. Keep talking, kid. Keep talking. They don't want to kill you, Jerry. They want to help you. They know about your leg, and they'll help you down. Throw away your gun, Jerry, please. Jerry, please, for me. Don't force them to kill you. If you keep firing, they'll have to fire back. Jerry, let me know that you hear, that you understand. If you do, fire two shots in the air and drop your gun. All right, Singleton. Let's have your answer. Keep talking, Mr. Singleton. Jerry, please, fire two shots in the air and drop your gun. Everything's all right now. Call out the roadblocks. Tell headquarters to send an ambulance. Pick up that gun, will you, Ken? He's going to be all right. He just lost a lot of blood. We were wrong, Jerry. We were wrong about the police. I wish you'd tell that to a few million other people. See Highway Patrol again next week. Until then, remember, it isn't what you drive, but how you drive that counts. This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week.
Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state law. A missing person may be tracked down because his personal history and habits are known. But when he has no predictable habits, the problem is difficult and becomes dangerous when those unpredictable habits are mixed with uncontrollable homicidal tendencies. Haldor Mattern, an ordinary appearing man with extraordinarily strong hands, was such a person. The search for missing persons is a police function which the highway patrol is uniquely equipped to perform by reason of its mobility and widespread jurisdiction. This is where we found the last trace of him. The hat was lying right about there. Doctor, when is your first missing? About an hour ago. Can you give me his full name and his description? Well, his name's Halder Mattern. He's about 5'11". 160 pounds. He's about 54. He's gray hair. He's wearing the regulation uniform, you know, the gray pants and the gray shirt and yeah. sneakers. He could have gone any place, up and down this road or into the woods here. Well, I brought his sweater. They said to bring something to give the dogs a scent. Come here. Twenty-one fifty to headquarters. Go ahead, twenty-one fifty. I'm on the north side of the Riverhead Mental Hospital. Here's a description of the escaped patient. Hold on. Go ahead, doctor. 5'11", 160. 5'11", 160 pounds. Day 54. Shirt. Gray pants. Shirt. No hat and sneakers. No hat and sneakers. Have you got that? All right, hold on. I'll get back to you. They just brought the dogs in. 10-4? 10-4. Hey, let me have these. Take these. The dogs will get the scent from it. Well, don't the dogs have to smell something that actually touches the ground, like shoes? No, they'll pick the scent out of the air. Now, look, tell me more about this guy. His family, where he's from, who he knows on the outside. Well, he has no family. He was brought to us after an army medical discharge. We only know that in this confused state of mind, you can't tell what he's liable to do, what quirk his mind will take. But he tends to violence if triggered off. Now, what's the trigger? Well, the thing that triggers him off is usually his hands or violin playing. We, we do know that he was a frustrated violinist. We think that's what started his illness. What set him off this time? Same thing as last time. One of the patients at the hospital didn't believe him. You see, Manon tells everyone that he's given concerts at Carnegie Hall. The cunning of Haldor Mattern asserted itself again. Suspecting that bloodhounds would be brought into the search, he hit upon a simple ruse. He very carefully backtracked in his own footsteps from the water to the road. He knew that his scent would stop at the water, and he hoped that his pursuers would believe that he had entered it in an effort to elude the bloodhounds. Come on, let's go. Probably went in the woods. He's heading for the highway on the other side. Have somebody bring my car around in case he gets through. Come on. So, you live in Stanfield, huh? Well, I'm glad to take you in. My farm is just back about 40 miles. Say, you know Mrs. Eileen Haley in Stanfield, a widow? 
Imagine me at my age, traipsing off on a 500-mile trip with the winter I've never seen. <laughs> well, mister, it's, uh... Oh, see, I, uh, your name slipped me. Mattern. Halder Mattern, the violinist. Well, sir, seeing as how 500 miles is a bit more than I care to drive myself, well, I got this letter from this friend of mine I'm gonna visit. I got it right here, you see? You know, asking me if I'd like to share the driving with this friend of his, that's just Mrs. Haley. Well, sir, I just jumped at the chance. Of course, I didn't just come right out and say, why, well, sure, I'll be glad to take her. No, sir, Mrs. Haley and me, we just kept writing back and forth to each other, you know, uh, uh, finding out about each other a couple of weeks. Uh, you see, I don't want no uh, long-winded woman burning my ears for 500 miles. No, sir. <laughs> but there, uh, she sounds nice, real nice. Plays the piano, so she wrote me. <laughs> Say, you must be working on your fiddle. Why? Well, that hand of yours. Uh, guys, you know, I caught my hand uh, in a gear once and uh, uh, jumped like that for more than a year. My hand does not jump. Oh, well, it sure does. My hand does not jump. Well, mister, I'm not blind. How could I play the violin if my hand jumped? Are you sure you, you can uh, play the fiddle? <laughs> They went in here all right. Pretty good swim across that lake. Uh, they might have gone upstream or down to throw the dogs off. Let's try it this way. Right. Come on, man. No luck. Well, they didn't come out down there. I right, try it up that way. How far up do you want me to go? Well, I don't know, about what about a half a mile? Right. Come on. I'm afraid, Mr. Wilson, I won't be able to talk intelligently about your work farming. My field is music. I teach the piano now and once upon a time played with the Dallas Symphony Orchestra. I will expect you about noon, Friday, September 8th. I'll be ready. I'm too old to keep gentlemen waiting. James Wilson, RFD 26, Glenville. Born December 20th, 1900. Height, 5 feet 11. Weight, 160. Eyes, blue. Hair, gray. James Wilson, you're my friend. You're gonna help me to get away from here. too, Mrs. Haley.
can come out of the stream that way. Call from headquarters. About what? Dead man's been found in the brush about three miles up the highway. A farmer named Roback phoned and he's at the scene now. That could have been Madden or somebody you met. All right, keep looking. I'll go up the highway and take a look at the dead man. Matthews. If you find Madden, remember he's a mental patient. Try not to excite him. Excitement can trigger him off. I'll try not to. Mr. Wilson. Mrs. Haley? You don't look exactly the way I expected, but, but I guess I don't either. Shall we go? Oh, allow me. I'm a farmer. We're pretty strong. <laughs> We both couldn't go, so we drew straws. I was the lucky one. had been found three miles from where the bloodhounds had lost Mattern's trail, Dan Matthews feared that he would find the first victim of Mattern's homicidal mania. It's not Mattern. Looks like he's got a broken neck. What can you tell me about this? Not much. I was coming down the road, and this black sedan pulled out of the brush, almost hit me, and kept right on going, too, south. I stopped mad in the wet hand, and I figured, kind of funny the way he pulled out like that, so I went over to look, and... Did you get the license number? No, I didn't. Can you describe the car and the driver? Oh, just that it was a medium-sized sedan. That's all I remember, and... Oh, it was a fellow driving. Twenty-one fifty to headquarters. Go ahead, twenty-one fifty. More on the Madden case. A little unit south of Riverhead. Madden might be driving a sedan. What color? Uh, it, it was black. Black. Send out the car and the lab boys too. Ten four. Ten four. Twenty-one fifty to eleven oh three. Go ahead, twenty-one fifty. Check with me three miles south on Highway Seven. Bring the dogs. I'm so grateful to you for taking me. If you ever want me to drive... If I get tired. Uh, tell me, Mrs. Haley, were you a soloist with the Dallas Orchestra? Oh, no. My piano playing isn't that good. Pick it up, Annie. Pick it up, Roy. Pick it up, Annie. There's no doubt about it, huh? Oh, uh, he was here, all right. Mason! Make sure nothing such till the boys get here. Mr. Matthews, shouldn't we concentrate on finding Mattern? Well, if we can identify the body, we can identify his car. We know Mattern's driving. All we need to find it is a description and the license number. They're on to something. All right, take them away.
sales receipts. Made out to a James Wilson, RFD 26, Glenville. Madden must have planted these under the rock. Twenty-one fifty to headquarters. Go ahead, twenty-one fifty. Madden case. What dispositions been made of the unit south of Riverhead? All roads under surveillance south of Riverhead. Have we got a patrol to Glenville? That's north of me. Stand by. Thirty-two forty, just outside of Glenville. Have him proceed to Glenville and check on a a James Wilson RFD twenty-six. I want a description of him and the car he might have been driving south on Highway 7 in the vicinity of Riverhead at 11 a.m. today. 10-4? 10-4. I'll proceed south on Highway 7. 10-4. You know, I seem to remember in one of your letters you're saying that you didn't know anything about music. Oh, I couldn't have. Can I see your license, please? Well, of course, officer. I'll have it right in here. There you are. You mind taking it out of there, please? Are you looking for a robber? Uh, no, ma'am. We're looking for a mental patient who escaped from the Riverhead Center Hospital this afternoon. Is he dangerous? Well, we aren't sure, ma'am. We, uh, we stole a vehicle, though. Thank you. What's your date of birth, Mr. Wilson? Uh, December 20th, 1900. Where are you heading, ma'am? We're going to Centerville to visit some friends. Well, be careful. Don't pick up any strangers. The fellow we're looking for is rather elderly. We aren't sure how he's dressed. The clothes he has on are stolen. Thank you, officer. We'll be careful. You're being so quiet, Mrs. Haley. What were you saying before? Well, I was saying, uh, hoping that he wasn't dangerous. Who? The man who escaped. Oh, I mean, what were you saying about music before the patrolman stopped us? Oh, well, I was saying that I was sure that you wrote me that you had no ear for music. Nonsense. Oh, well, I'm sorry, but I, I seem to remember. Uh, oh, I've developed a headache. I have an excellent ear. Perhaps the best in the country, certainly the best for violin, the most difficult of all instruments. Do you play? Don't look at my hands. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean anything, Mr. Wilson. I can play with the best of them. Paganini to Menowin, any of them. From the foreman of a farm in Glenville, a highway patrol officer secured information identifying the dead man as the owner of the farm, James Wilson. The officer also learned of Wilson's appointment with Eileen Haley. He immediately reported this and a description of the stolen car to Dan Matthews, who had been checking roadside gas stations and diners in the area. On learning that James Wilson was to have picked up Eileen Haley at her address in Stanfield, Matthews started for her house. Twelve oh one to twenty one fifty. Twenty one fifty by. Describe car and woman passenger. Passed me approximately one hour ago. Going south at moderate speed. Man showed me Wilson's identification. Twenty one fifty to headquarters. Go ahead, twenty one fifty. Matt is going south on Highway Seven. He's about twenty, twenty five, thirty miles south of Stanfield. I'm proceeding south. Ten four. Ten four. Why are we stopping again, Mr. Wilson? Uh, it's just easier to talk when I'm not driving. Well, uh, then would you like me to drive? No. And another thing, stop looking at my hands. Oh, and at I'm, my shoes. I'm not. My clothes. I'm not. Do you find my hands unsuitable for the violin? No. Then stop looking at them. I'm sick and tired, sick and tired of having everyone look at my hands. Uh, shall we, shall we drive, Mr. Wilson? I won't have it. I won't allow it. I won't tolerate it. Nothing yet. 
I've checked every spot between here and from where the pass went. Then they're still ahead of you. Keep checking. You mean you've never heard of James Wilson, the violin virtuoso? At my last concert, I played the Paganini. There's nothing, nothing more difficult. Encore after encore. And you've never heard of me? I have. I have, Mr. Wilson. Then why don't you applaud? Let me go, let me go! My bow hand! You've maimed it! No! Look what you've done! I'll never play again! They haven't got by us. Oh, they must have. They got by the last checkpoint. There's no crossroads between here and there. I know there isn't, but... Look, this is your territory. What do you know about it? Any dirt roads, a farm road, anything? A dirt track, alongside the underpass. All right, you stay here. Let you and I take a look. Come on. I didn't hurt it. Ordinary people never understand. Naming my hand is worse than killing, worse than murder. You've deprived the world of life, my creation of music. Right ahead there. Look. We might be too late already. Hold it. If she's alive, let's keep it that way. Dr. Hill told me what triggered him off. Now, Wilson's got a broken neck. We gotta get right on top of this guy before he can use his hands. He probably heard the car when we drove up. He figures we're gonna pass him. We'll pass him. Or do you drive? Slow. for a life. It will be over quickly. My hand is strong. <laughs> This is very familiar. Well, that's possible. I, I'm not unknown. Do you ever go to concerts? Violin recitals? Yes. Carnegie Hall? The violin virtuoso. You couldn't be. Believe me, sir, this is an honor. Oh, you do remember my last concert at Carnegie Hall. I'll never forget it. Then would you do me a favor? A great favor. Would you come back with me? There's a certain person I want you to tell that I did play there. He won't believe me, but he will believe you. Would you come? Yeah, sure. Where is it? Riverhead Hospital. You see, I hurt my hand, and they're trying to cure it. How's the other one? Oh, it's all right. As good as ever. All I want for is to have you vouch for me, just to tell them that I did play there. Yeah, sure. We'll go right away. Mrs. Haley, you stay here. Come on, let's take my car. Next week's Highway Patrol story is a very unusual one. I hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember, it isn't the car that kills, it's the driver.
This is Bradrick Crawford saying, see you next week. Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. detection and punishment of crime on the nation's highways require constant vigilance and selfless devotion to duty on the part of our law enforcement personnel. Many types of crime and criminals are encountered by the highway patrol in their round-the-clock activity, including unexplained outbreaks of violence. One of the most deadly criminals is the amateur, the frightened, panicky gunman who shoots first and thinks afterwards. The amateur acts on impulse, he steals a car, heads for the open highway, and when he sees an isolated place such as a diner, he makes his decision on the spur of the moment. He is a man afraid, and this makes him deadly. I'll be right with you. First... Money. Oh, no, it's just a minute, fella. Take it easy. You, you can have anything you want, but take it easy with that gun. Get the money fast. Don't move. Well, nobody's gonna try anything, fella. There's no need for anyone to get excited now. Just... Just take it easy with that gun, and I'll do whatever you like, okay? Get the money. It's, uh, it's in the register. Do you want me to get it for you? No. We just stay where you are. Now, there's no need for anyone to get hurt. No need at all. It's right there in the drawer, all I've got. Help yourself. You fool. I'm hit. You hear me? I'm hit. Stay right there. Ah! I'm hurt. Help me, I'm hurt! Twenty-one fifty to headquarters. Headquarters by. By ten twenty is Highway Forty Two, Area Nine. I'm heading in. Cancel seven oh four on disabled vehicles. Being towed in. Ten four. Cancel 704 this day. Oh, I have an addition for your hot sheet. Auto theft reported 1530 this day. Let's have it. The owner reports an armed man forced him out of car on Highway 41, Area 8, then headed your direction on Highway 42, 1959, Green, four-door sedan. License number, MFG, 015. Mike Fox George, 015. 10-4? 10-4.
help him. Can't you see he's hurt? So am I. Go on, get inside. Well, won't you please let me call a doctor? Now listen, I'm not going to fool around. We're going inside and you're going to find something to fix my leg. Now move! Pull it tight. You need a doctor. Can't you understand? Pull! In the name of decency, won't you let me go to my husband? Please let me help him. Stay here. I swear, I won't do anything. I swear I won't. Just let me go help him. You can help him when I get out of here. All right, now get this. You don't move. Understand? You stay here until I get out of here. You come after me. You try anything and I'll kill you. You got that? You just stay here. Just take it easy. I'll get an ambulance. Twenty-one fifty to headquarters. Headquarters by. Requesting ambulance. My ten twenty. Harmon's Diner, Highway 42, Area 8. Ambulance requested. Harmon's Diner, Highway 42, Area 8. The hot sheet. Mary Frank George, 015. The car is at my 1020. I'm investigating a shooting. I can use help. 10 4? 10 4. Come out with your hands up. Are you coming out or am I coming in? All right, come on, come on, make up your mind. You come in and the lady here gets it. You hear me? I'll kill her. Doris. Doris! I'm Matthews, Highway Patrol. Do what he tells you. Now don't try anything. Just do what he tells you. Doris, can you answer me? Doris! Answer him. 
Just help my husband. You hear, cop? You hear? Try anything and she gets it too. Doris, you'll be okay if you do exactly what he tells you. Just take it easy, Doris. Everything's going to be all right. <sighs> Operator, get me Highway Patrol Headquarters, please. Highway Patrol. Headquarters, this is Matthews. Is Ken there? Ken Williams? Put him on, will you? Yes, sir. Williams. Ken, we got a dandy this time. You know my 1020? Join me. I need help, Father. Come on. Right away. Cop, can you hear me? Cop. Hey, I can hear you. We're coming out. Now listen to me. I got her and I got a gun. You know that? Do you? I keep talking. We're coming out and I'm gonna walk out of here. You try and stop me and she gets it. You hear me, cop? She gets it. You hear me? I'm coming out. All right, I'm waiting. All right, easy, Doris, easy. Cop. Stand still. Doris, don't move. Don't do a thing. You use that gun and she gets it. You know that, don't you? Answer me. All right, what do you want? We're leaving. You get it, cop? I'm getting out of here, and she's going along with me. Please, please let me help my husband. Please let me help him. And you don't try anything, cop. You don't shoot, and you don't follow us. And she's coming along for a nice little ride. Leave her here. Oh, no. No, sir, not a chance. She's coming with me. And you try and stop me, and I'll kill her. You hear me? I'll kill her. Can't you help him? Can't you see my husband is dying? Please help him. You want a hostage? Take me. Leave her here. Not a chance. You heard me. Let her go. I'll take her place. You? Use your head, will you? You take her, we'll follow you. You know that? No. In about one minute, this place is going to be crawling with police. You want her to die? You want a hostage? Take me. I'm a policeman. You think one of my boys is going to take a chance on me getting killed? No. Come on, let her go. You got a gun. I'll drop it. Come on, think. William, twice the protection she is. You got a police car? Yeah, it's right outside. It's got a radio in it. You keep the gun on me. I'll call the patrol. Some will let us through. Now let her go. Throw your gun away. Clear away. And let her go. Not while you've got a gun. All right, Doris, move away from me. Throw it away. Clear away. Slide it on the floor over here. Move away from me, Doris. No. Do what he says. Do anything. Can't you see? Cotton is dying. Just let him go. All right, take it easy with him. The ambulance will be here in a minute. Ambulance. Listen, no ambulance guys are coming in here. Not until we've gone. Go on, Doris. Get him out of here. Help me up. Now we go. No car and you drive. Sure, it's my car. Where are we going to go? Move! Cops. Yeah, sure, we're cops. About two seconds are going to be swarming all over your back. What are you going to do now? Go ahead.
Inside an isolated roadside diner, a killer holds a gun on his hostage. Outside in the night, men of the highway patrol stand ready, not daring to open fire. Tried looking in from the side. There's no sign of them. Well, they're in there. Mrs. Harmon spelled it out for me. Who's covering the back? Uh, Kenyon and Riley. You cancel the roadblocks? Yeah, both sectors. It's getting darker. In ten minutes, we won't be able to see a thing. Yeah, I know. Well, let's pull in the cars, use what we can. You want to get started? All right. Oh, Ken, does the wife know anything about this guy? Any identification, something like that? <sighs> no, just one thing. What's that? He's nervous. Too nervous, from what she says. That's some panicky amateur. Yeah, with a gun in his hand. There's a horn if you want to use it. Thanks. Still no sign from inside? No, and I'm going to keep my eyes on that door. Well, what do we do now? We wait. There's a light switch on the wall, you know. Just, you just leave it alone. All right, come on, what now? You tell me. Your leg body? <laughs> get out of it. You got a tourniquet on it. Cutting circulation off. It's all right. It's all right. You're sure now, huh? You got a slug in it. Oh, that's just gonna be dandy. All right, shut up, you hear me? Shut up. I'm shut. This is Sergeant Williams. I've got two squads here. Three more units on the way. I've got blocks on both ends of the area. Everything we need is here. I've just checked the whole layout, and we're ready. We're ready any time. And now what do you do? I don't care what's out there. We're still going to get out. Why don't you tell me right now? How? Well, the way you said. They won't let you get hurt. We'll just walk out there and get in your car. They won't try a thing. What are you going to do with my car? Go where, where I was going before with his woods. Anything. I haven't got much of a plan, have I? I don't need any. You drive. That's all. I'm safe with you. What happens when I'm through driving? Come on, use your head. I can make it. You think you're just going to get out of my car and walk away? No. I'm still going to get out. Now, listen to me and listen good, because I'm going to tell you the time of the day. I know you and your type. I know I'm inside out. You're punks. You're amateurs. I don't want to hear anymore. You drive in, pull a job, you get nervous and panic. Then you start shooting. You know something else? You're going to shoot again, too. You're a trigger-happy punk. Shut up! That's it, boy. Panic and shoot. That's your only way out. That's the only thing you know. I'll kill you. I swear I'll kill you. Why don't you try it? Three shots. I just checked the whole area. We can close in the minute you give the signal. Shall I break out the tear gas? Not yet. We can't take the chance. A shock like that would trigger him for sure. Well, shouldn't we close in, then? <sighs> now, Dan figured it this way. He knew it was going to develop like this when he offered to take that woman's place as a hostage. Figured it how? Figured on sweating him out. That's the only real chance he has. We know he threw down his gun. Well, the killer didn't. We just heard the shots. Yeah, but I've got to give him all the chance he needs. It's the only way I can play it. Mr. Matthews! This is Williams. I'm holding up our attack. Show yourself if you're not hurt. If you're not hurt, come to the window. You hear that, punk? It's the police. This joint's surrounded. This is your plan. You want to walk out here alive? Let's go. Wait. Wait for what? Wait. I'll tell you one thing right now. You got one chance. Do you hear me good? One chance. Come on, let's go. One chance. One. Mr. Matthews, if you're not hurt, 
Signal to us from the window. All right, this is my last warning. I want to see Dan Matthews now. You said there was one chance. Nobody's going to shoot until you do. Now, you're not a killer. Let's keep it that way right now, huh? No, I, I killed him. You killed who? Well, the guy in here. Cotton's not dead. They took him away in an ambulance. He must be dead. No, he's not dead. Now, you listen to me good. I'll prove you're not a killer. How? I'm going to walk out this door. Are you going to gun on me? You keep it on me. Keep it on my back. I'll get proof from my boys. Tell them I got a gun. They know this. Hey, Kip! Throw the spots in the doorway. Yes, sir. Call headquarters about Cotton Harmon. I want to know if he's going to live. Yes, sir. Dennis, call headquarters and check it out. 3110 to headquarters. Headquarters, by. Check the hospital and give me a report on Cotton Harmon's condition. I'll stand by. 10 4. Headquarters to 3110. 3110, by. Here's a report from the hospital. Headquarters says Harmon has an even chance. I can't. Let's have a report. I want a good allowed. Mr. Matthews. All right, let's hear it. The hospital says Harmon has better than an even chance to live. Repeating. The hospital says Harmon has better than an even chance. All right, you hear? Close the door. Close it! Well, that was our chance when the door was open. Look, he asked for the report and I give it to him. If he'd wanted gas, he'd have found some way to tell us. You know, gas might be the one thing that started him shooting again. Well, what does he want, then? What's he trying? The only thing he can try. All right, you hear that? You're not a murderer. You're not facing a murder rap. Come on. I don't want to hear anymore. Just stay there. Would you believe me now? My boys and I are trying to help you. I don't want to hear anymore. You don't, huh? Stay there. Okay. I won't stay here. I'll sit down. All right, kid. Starting right now, this is the payoff. Now, listen to me good. Think I'm going to be a chauffeur? Drive you around for miles and let you shoot me? No, not me. Uh, don't move. All you want to do is get away, punk. Well, you're not going to. Watch me. Watch me. Don't take your eyes off me now. Don't move. Remember one thing. Remember this. You're not a killer. You pull that trigger, you will be. And I guarantee in 10 seconds, you'll be dead, too. Now, do you hear me good? I'm telling you, I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Another thing. You and that gun, they're not giving me orders. All right, now watch me, punk. Watch me. I'm starting for you. I'll kill you! Don't move. Get back, please. Get back. Get back. Oh, come on, you got okay. I know your type. Come on, I know your type real good. Get back, please! Hold your fire! Hold him here. Yes, sir. Thanks. Why don't you join me? Thanks, I will. You know, it's a nice night. I think we can have a full moon. Yeah, it looks like a nice night.
Highway Patrol again next week. Until then, remember, if you care to drive, drive with care. This is Bradley Crawford saying, see you next week. state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. Anytime crime follows a fixed pattern, the pattern itself helps solve the crime. But when the crime committed is original, when there is no pattern, then the job is more difficult. And it gets most difficult when the criminal himself follows no fixed pattern, when he walks and talks like any other passerby, when he apparently is just another businessman, brisk, neat, confident. Charlie? Yes. Put your coat on. Now, don't wear that. People look in other people's windows. Neat. The whole job is neat, Charlie. So far. What could go wrong now? Everything. Supposing Ferris doesn't want to pay the ransom. When Ferris doesn't get to see his baby again. That's a draw, and I want to win. Don't worry. We will. He'll pay. That could be trouble, too. You mean collecting the ransom? They'll try every trick in the book, then. It's their one contact with us, their one and only chance to grab us. But we've got everything planned, haven't we? Everything we've thought of. It's a crazy idea to begin with, kidnapping a machine. Who ever heard of such a thing? Listen, it's a great idea. The rewards are just as big, and if we get caught, the rap's nothing compared to what it would be if we kidnapped a person. Get the clothes. Hundred thousand dollars. That's the cost of a new machine. They'll never pay that. Oh, yes, they will. A new machine costs a hundred thousand dollars, but it takes a year to build. Waiting that year could cost them a million dollars. Hey, Charlie. One thing still bothers me. How do we know they won't unload the machine out of the trailer tonight? Because the trailer arrives at 5 o'clock. Unloading is a six-hour job, and the workday ends there at 5.30. Why can't they get a special unloading crew? We're betting they don't unload until tomorrow morning. Come on, let's go. State transfer. We come for our trailer. Uh, I just came on. I don't know whether they've unloaded that computer or not. Well, they called us an hour ago to come pick it up. I don't understand you guys. You spend $100,000 for a machine and, and you worry about a day's rental on a trailer. Well, you just made it. It's almost closing time. Well, the traffic was murdered. 
It'll be worse when you're lugging a semi. Okay. Eight miles an hour on the ground. Okay. All these men around, I don't like it. Another worry? Listen, when I get out, back up to the trailer. And if anything goes wrong, let me handle it. Okay. Is that clear? Yes. tire on your tractor, the inside one. Pressure's way down. We'll check it first chance we get. Thanks a million. Don't mention it. Catch the gate. Let's get going. Right. Take your time. We haven't got a thing to do until tomorrow when they find out what happened. You're not going to call Ferris tonight? No. Why not? Why wait? Two reasons. If I call tonight, the police start looking tonight. And in a smaller area, then they'll have to look tomorrow. When we could have had all night to drive. Well, what's the second reason? Psychological. If I get a big prize fight, the champ is the contender waiting in the ring to get him nervous. And that's what we're doing. Tomorrow, when they find the machine is gone, they sit around and wonder how it could be missing. We get them nervous. Throw them off their stride. Oh, when are you supposed to check with the real estate agent? I've got a 10-day option on that property with a week to go. Tell me, is the machine assembly a secret, Mr. Ferris? What I mean to say is, would it be worthwhile stealing it just to see how it works? No, I'm afraid not. The plans of the computer have been in every electronics publication since the idea was first conceived. I see. Well, what about the spare parts? 
Would it be worthwhile stealing it for the individual parts? No, it's not the materials used that give the machine its value. It's the intricacy of the assembly. I can't talk to anybody. What? Hello, this is Mr. Ferris. If you want to see your machine back safe and sound, Mr. Ferris, have $100,000 in unmarked 10s and 20s by 2 o'clock this afternoon. Be at your bank at that time. You'll be contacted there. You'll be told where to take the money, in person, in your own car, alone. The computer has been stolen and is being held for ransom. We'll do everything we possibly can to help you, Mr. Ferris. But what will I do, Mr. Matthews? I don't want to pay them $100,000, and I don't want to lose the machine. It would cost more to replace it. What have you done so far, Sergeant? I gave r &I a description of the two men and sent out an APB on the Tri-State trailer. Mm -hmm. What about the tractor? Oh, wait a minute, hold it. This is Matthews. I want a state survey map. Send her in on the Ferris Electronics plant, and we'll circle out from there. You'll mark every filling station for me. Can you get it to me in an hour? All right, as soon as you can, then. Thanks. Get me scale and weight detail, will you? Would it be much trouble to transfer it from one trailer to another? Hmm. It's a big job. Hello? Get me a list of all semi-trailer trucks that stopped at weighing-in stations between 6 o'clock last night and 7 o'clock this morning. I'm especially interested in tri-state trailer number... Uh, uh, give me that piece of paper over there, Sergeant, will you? Sure. Thanks. Nora, 57193. Yeah, that's right. Thanks. Now, what about the tractor? Anything special on it? Left for a tire was low. Well, that might be some help. Call all the scale house stations. Maybe somebody else noticed that tire, too. Then I want you to call the auto theft and the hijacking details. See what they've come up with. These guys either stole that tractor or rented it. Oh, find out how far they can go in a tank full of gas. And put a man on time cards over at Tri-State Transfer. Find out who wasn't at work yesterday, also today. Do the same thing at Ferris Electronics. Right. Go in my office. How about a cigarette? No, thank you. Uh, Mr. Matthews, do you think you'll have the machine located before 2 o'clock? Well, that's hard to say, Mr. Ferris. I hope so. Oh, by the way, did you drive your own car over here? Yes. Where'd you park it? In the back of the building, in the reserve parking area. Radio maintenance, please. You know the license number? 1M90584. 584. Hello, this is Matthews. There's a car parked in the reserve section parking lot in back of this building. License number 1 Mary 90584. I want you to rig up a two way radio in it right away. No, no, no. Use the car's regular radio antenna. Thanks. Helicopter squad, please. Now, this is Matthews. Can I have a helicopter on standby at 2 o'clock this afternoon? Good. Thanks very much. Mr. Ferris, it's about 11.30. Now, I want you to go back to your office and then arrange with the bank to have $100,000 in unmarked 10s and 20s ready. At exactly 2 o'clock, I'll send over a valise. It'll be empty. But, Mr. Matthews, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to pay them the $100,000, Mr. Ferris. But we'll pay it our way. <laughs> Routine police measures were in operation. The criminal had not been apprehended. A puzzled and frightened Mr. Ferris was en route to his two o'clock appointment. Some highly non routine measures were put into motion. Lieutenant Andrews of the Highway Patrol, Mr. Hi. Ferris. You haven't been contacted since you left your office, have you? No. That's good. 
They uh, probably try to reach me. We're going to exchange identities. You're taking my place? Uh, it's just a precaution, Mr. Ferris. They probably don't know exactly what you look like. Mr. Matthews didn't think it advisable to tell you earlier. It could have influenced your behavior. Oh. Hello? I understand Mr. Ferris is in the bank. May I speak to him, please? It's very important. Uh, one moment, please. He's right here. We'll give him just 30 seconds so they can't trace this call. Uh, Mr. Ferris, there's a call for you here, sir. Hello? Listen carefully. There's a blue coupe parked at the corner of Stewart and Miller Road. The keys are in it. Use it instead of your own car. Drive west on Stewart Boulevard. The tank is full. Keep on driving till you're contacted. And don't talk to anyone of the dealers off. <laughs> Two two seven five. This is two two seven five. Two two seven five over. This is twenty one fifty. Go ahead. They instructed me to change cars. I'm in a blue coupe now. License number two Charlie seven zero zero eight seven. They told me to head west on Stewart Boulevard. I'm now at Stewart and Maple Drive, doing thirty miles an hour. Stewart Boulevard runs clear through to the next state. 2150 to 3156. 2150 to 5601. This is 3156. Andrew, switch cars. He's now in a blue coupe. License 2 Charles 70087. He's heading west on Stewart Boulevard. He crossed Stewart Maple about two minutes ago, going 30 miles an hour. Try and catch up to him and tail it. 3156, 10 4. Stand by for further orders. Come in 5601. This is 5601. Proceed north to Stewart Boulevard. 2275 in Blue Coupe. License 2 Charlie 70087. Tail him until suspect makes contact. 10 4. Okay, take her up. Stuart and Ashcraft. I have to break off now. All units close in on Stuart and Ashcraft. Contact's being made. You're covered. So don't make a move to follow me and don't try to stop me. Is that it? Yeah. Where's the semi-trailer? We'll find out later. Give me the keys. Remember what I said, you're covered. This is Andrews. They're in a black sedan, license number two, Charlie 63364. They're armed. Heading north on Ashcraft. You got that? Better than that, we got them. 2150 to 3822. Proceed to Ashcraft and Miller, code three. Cut off a black sedan, license. Two Charlie, six, 
3364. Heading north. The men are armed. Don't take any chances. <laughs> They're changing cars. Well, so far, so good. The bag's empty. Drive. We're in a trap. They're spotting us from that. Drive. Five, six, oh, one. They're going west, Miller to Garden. Intercept. First turn is Tunnel Road. It's about a half a mile, so don't ever shoot it. Tunnel Road? Where does it lead to? That doesn't matter now. Just drive. They just turned off Garden on the Tunnel Road, heading east. 3156, continue north on Ashcraft. Three eight two two. Return to Barton Way. Head west and intercept. <laughs> Proceed south to Dover Road and intercept. We'll lose them in the tunnel for a few minutes. They're in the tunnel now. Here they come. Stand by. That's the car. Be careful. Police. Help. Back in the tunnel, I was stopped. Two men with guns. They stopped me. They took my car. What kind of a car, Jack? Convertible. What color? White. 3156 to helicopter. They changed cars in the tunnel. The car we're looking for is a white convertible heading back toward Garden Street. There it is, heading north on Dover Road.
wants to be cooperative. The computer is on a farm southeast of Weberville. Mr. Ferris is going to be glad to hear that. Why didn't you run? I figured the odds. Didn't you figure the odds on this job, too? Yeah. But I didn't figure on that. Yeah, they sure are crazy contraptions. I don't know what makes them fly. Take them away. The Highway Patrol story next week is a very unusual one. We hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember, it isn't the car that kills, it's the driver. This is Bradley Crawford saying, see you next week. state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state law. Across the nation, men of the Highway Patrol remain constantly alert to crime, danger, and violence. They know that even in a lonely, isolated service station, tragedy can strike hard and fast. To a sailor and his girl, there was no sign here of impending disaster. Nothing to warn them that in a matter of moments, they would be trapped in a nightmare. It's a funny way to run a gas station. I wonder where everybody is. Gee, honey, I wish you'd filled the tank like you said you would. I'm sorry, Jimmy. I just didn't have time. Oh, never mind. Hey, anybody here? Oh, Jimmy, please make them hurry. Scared? Yes. Don't be. Where we're going, nobody can find us, not even your father. Well, I just keep thinking of him when he reads that note. Let him. What if he does try and find us? By that time, we'll be Mr. and Mrs. James Newman. Hey, that sounds great, you know. Mr. and Mrs. James Newman. Jimmy, do something to make him hurry. I'll see if I can find somebody. After all, we can't keep that minister waiting. Section of 90 and Highway 41. Cancel APB 411. Hit and run, 1330 this date. Vehicle and suspect in custody. I'll be in a little while. 10-4? 10-4. Hello,
you're doing 85, Doctor. You are a doctor, aren't you? Yes, officer. My shield's on the front of the car. Yeah, I saw it. What's the hurry? I have an emergency call. A sick baby. Where? Hoffman Service Station, Highway 41. What's the trouble? I don't know. Ed Hoffman drove up to my place so excited he could hardly talk. He was too rattled to drive, so I made him stay behind. He says the baby's choking. I'll get in my car. I'll drive you. Come on. to headquarters. Headquarters by? I'm going to the Hoffman service station. It's on Highway 41. It's an emergency call for the doctor. I'm taking him there now. 10-4? 10-4. Ten I think he's going to be all right. He's breathing. He's alive. Here's your handkerchief. Jimmy, you were wonderful. It's nothing. It's just stuff they taught us in boot camp. Hey, look at the time. We gotta get married. Lady? Lady? You saved his life. Well, I'm only glad we weren't too late. I'm sure it'll be all right now. The doctor should be along soon, and we are on our way to get married. I think uh, we'll be going now. You saved my baby's life. I'll fill that gas tank myself and leave the money at the pump. Headquarters. Headquarters by? By 1020 is the Hoffman service station on Highway 41. Send 2275 to Dr. Ronald Kincaid's house. You've got the address there. You'll find Mr. Hoffman there. The doctor's here with me now. Now have William stand by. 10 4? 10 4. Everything all right? We're in trouble, real trouble, starting right now. offer you both my best wishes and my congratulations. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thanks for everything. And thank Mrs. Lincoln for being a witness. My wife enjoys nothing more, I assure you. You're off on a honeymoon now, are you? We sure are. Ten whole days. Jimmy's got a ten-day leave. Good. I'm glad to hear it. So am I. We have a spot waiting for us that's miles from anybody. Ten whole days just by ourselves. Mrs. Lincoln and I got away by ourselves just last year. We had a delightful week fishing. Well, Goodbye, Mr. and Mrs. Newman, and good luck to you. Hey, you know, that sounds great. Mr. and Mrs. Newman. Let me have that again, Doc. Mrs. Hoffman just told me the child was choking, and a young sailor got it to breathing again. To do it, he breathed in the baby's mouth. Well, go on, go on, go on. I'm almost sure the child has epidemic meningitis. It's highly contagious. I've just inoculated Mrs. Hoffman. You say the sailor breathed into the kid's mouth. Where's the sailor now? Mrs. Hoffman doesn't know. She doesn't even know his name. Come on, Doc. Take it off for me fast. Well, the sailor drove up for gas. He saw the trouble, and he got the child breathing again. Then he drove off without even giving his name. What are his chances? Unless he receives inoculations within a matter of hours, he has no chance at all. Without inoculation to treatment, he will most certainly die. Oh, brother, that's great. I've just telephoned the hospital. They're sending an ambulance for the baby. Put Williams on fast. This is Williams. My 1020 is the Hoffman service station. Highway 41. Get out here fast. 10 4? On my way. 10 4. Doc, we gotta find that sailor. 
But Mrs. Hoffman has no idea. Well, if we do find him, have you got the medicine, the inoculation? Yes. And I want you to be inoculated, too, with meningitis. So there's no such thing as being too careful. How's the mother? Can I talk to her? Well, she's in pretty good shape. But you haven't much time. The ambulance will be here in a few minutes. Look, I've got to talk to her. She's the only one who can help us find the sailor. <laughs> Oh, Mrs. Hoffman. Oh, Mrs. Hoffman, can I talk to you for a minute, please? I'm Matthews, Highway Patrol. Uh, yes, I suppose so. I, I don't want to leave my baby too long. I can understand that, but do you realize how important it is to us to find a sailor to help save your baby's life? Oh, yes, Mr. Matthews. I was frantic and beside myself. I didn't know what to do. I'm afraid I was losing my head. When he came in here, he got some gasoline for the car. Yes, sir. Did he pay cash or use a credit card? Oh, cash. When I finally got hold of myself and knew my baby was going to be all right, I ran outside to ask his name or something. But he and the pretty young lady had left. He did leave some money by the gas pump, though. Oh, I feel so badly. I, after what he did and all, I never got a chance to thank him properly. Well, as you know, this is the doctor. He says your baby's going to be OK, so you got nothing to worry about. But do you realize how important it is for us to find the sailor and his girlfriend? Yes, sir. Golly, it sure is miles from anything. I told you, a million miles from nowhere. You think your father can find us here? Oh, Jimmy, I wish we didn't have to run away. But if Dad only knew you better, I'm sure he'd understand. Oh, he'll be okay, honey. Heck, with your mother dead and everything, he just gets panicky at the idea of being alone. Come on, let's go inside. Wait a minute. This has to be done right. Happy? Terribly. Me too. I've never been so happy in my whole life. What about the bulletins? I followed the first one at 1440. Notified the newspapers, radio and TV stations in the area. I gave them all we've got. An unidentified sailor and a girl, the descriptions. That's good. Well, I followed a supplementary on the APB. Anybody who's been near this gas station needs an inoculation. Kincaid's standing by at the hospital. He's got plenty of supplies. You gonna stay here? Well, for now, yeah. But look, the mother's not sure. She thought she heard the sailor say they were off to get married. Today? Yeah, but she doesn't know what direction they're headed in. Well, the way I figure, if he left here at 1,400, traveled at 40 miles an hour, he's got to be within a 60-mile radius. From here? Yeah. Look, cover every judge, jury, justice of the peace, city hall, everything. Find out if the sailor and his girl got married after 1,400 today. Because if we don't find these kids, they're going to die, and you know that. Yeah, I'll keep in touch. Right. Mrs. Newman, look, I'm a civilian. Mrs. Newman, gosh, it still sounds so funny. It's radio. What do you mean it sounds funny? You know what it sounds to me? Two of us up here all alone on top of a mountain. Your father blowing his top because he couldn't find us in a million years. No telephone, nobody to bother us, nothing. Baby, this is what I call being alive. girl, the 
first hours of their honeymoon seem magic and gloriously alive. But the highway patrol worked hard, knowing that a few hours away, Jim Newman and his bride have a rendezvous with death. Twenty-one fifty by. We've got a break. Twenty-two forty-five reports that Justice of the Peace married a sailor and a girl this afternoon at fifteen thirty. Who and where? The Justice is John Lincoln. His address four hundred Main Shelbyville, and the sailor is Seaman First Class James Newman. He has their names on the register. Oh, what about the girl? She's Betty Jane Martin. I'm trying to get her home address now, and I dispatch eighteen fifty to follow it up. All right, you check the girl's family. They must know where she is. And if you do find out. Meet me at the J.P.'s house. Now, what about the baby? Yeah, we just had a report. The baby's responding to treatment. Have headquarters get to Dr. Kincaid. Tell him I'll pick him up in about 15 minutes. Tell him to have his serum with him. 10-4? 10-4. Dr. Kincaid, Dr. Kincaid. Dr. Oh, yeah, and a dozen eggs. Oh, yeah. You're new in these parts, aren't you, young fella? That's right. Well, I guess that's about it. Fishing? Pardon? I said, did you come up to go fishing? No, no, just taking it easy. Uh, how much do I owe you? Ha have you got a place close by? Yeah, up in the mountains. Uh, how much did you say? I didn't say. Oh, would you like a paper? The buses just brought them up from the city. <laughs> no, uh, no thanks. Uh, say, would you mind hurrying it up a bit? Uh, Two dollars and forty cents without the paper. Two, twenty-five, thirty, forty, right in the head. Mm -hmm. Come up today, did you? That's right, just today. Well, thank you, young fella. Come back again. Thanks, I will. Doctor, I'm not an alarmist, but as justice of the peace, I do have things to do. This inoculation you just gave me, there's no chance that it no, might... No, 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 no. You're safe once you've had the shot. Mm -hmm. Well, I was just thinking about my calls in the morning. What about the boy and girl? How long before they have to... Uh, look, Doctor, you said we had two hours. Is that right? That's my best estimate. In other words, if we don't find them within two hours, that's it. If only I could be more helpful. I remember they said something about a small house on the top of a mountain. I'm sure of that. And you did have an idea it's not too far from here. Well, I assume so, Mr. Matthews. Why else would they have chosen me to marry them? You know, they could have driven further on? They could, but it isn't usual. It isn't? Most young people marry and then want to be alone, not out on a highway motoring. You've got a point there. That should be Williams. Well, where are they? Where's my daughter? You're Betty Jane's father, is that right? Yeah, I'm Homer Martin. Where are they? Don't you know? He has no idea. They've eloped, run away. Don't you understand? They don't want to be found. They don't want to be found. Here you are, honey. Go to work. No, sir. It's too early. But I'm hungry. Well, I got some hot dogs. Why don't I start a fire outside and we'll cook them? Our first married meal, and I'm not going to have you say it was hot dog. Here, sit down and read this. Newspaper? <laughs> the old guy must have tossed it in, I guess. Well, don't you want it? Are you kidding? Who cares what's going on in the world? I've got my whole world right here. Look, Mr. Grundy. He was a sailor. Does that help any? Well, there's been no sailor in here today. I'm sure of that. In fact, nobody in uniform. He doesn't have to be in uniform, Mr. Grundy. Well, then how am I going to know he was a sailor? Mr. Grundy, we don't have to tell you what an epidemic of meningitis means. That's why I inoculated you. Anyone who came anywhere near that boy is in danger. Look, Mr. Grundy, think. Now, really think. You're the only store within a 12-mile radius. Exactly who was in here after 4 o'clock this afternoon. I see. Well, if you hear anything at all, just call the operator. She'll know where to find us. Thanks very much. Any luck? 
No, that was the last motel. I checked every cabin for rent within 25 miles. Any report from the other units? Well, 2370 phoned in. Negative. That's a help. Mr. Matthews. Here, what? I want to offer a reward. A reward? For the return of my daughter. You want to offer a reward? I'll give anything to save her life. Now look, Mr. Martin, this is none of my business. I'm just curious, but I've got to ask the question. Why do you feel your daughter had to run away from home and get married? I didn't approve of the marriage. Did you talk to her about the marriage and about the boy? Well, no, I didn't. Right now, she's in love with the guy. You never even took the trouble to find out about him, did you? I didn't want her to leave home. That makes you pretty selfish, doesn't it? Because from all reports, she picked herself an awful nice guy. Mr. Martin, we don't want a reward. But you know what you should give? Why don't you give your daughter a little understanding? A little love and kindness. Say, mister, wait a minute. There was a young fella in here today answering your description, all right. When? What time? Well, I'd say about 4.30. He said he'd just arrived. Did he say where he was staying? Well, not that I could swear to, no. But he did say he had a cabin up in the mountains. And, and, and there ain't many cabins up there. Well, how many are there? Well, I see there's one or two up there. Oh, oh, the Taylor boys have a cabin way up on the North Range. But he... He's away. That's right, he's a lieutenant in the Navy. What? Look, Mr. Grundy, let's get this straight. Now, take it slow. You say there's a cabin up on the North Ridge. It's owned by a guy in the Navy, right? That's right. His name is Taylor. That could be it. Jim requested leave from the lieutenant, and he loaned him his place for the honeymoon. You stand by and keep the line open here. I'm going up there. You stand by, too, Doc. Oh, Mr. Matthews. Yeah, what? May I go, too? Yeah, sure. Come on. Hey, you know something? My wife's a great cook. How do you know? We haven't started eating yet. Well, I can tell by looking. Well, as long as you're just looking, young man, why don't you start a fire in the fireplace? It'll be nice later on when it gets dark. Romantic, huh? Mm, maybe a little bit. And a great cook. <laughs> no kindling. Oh, never mind. We'll use the newspaper. Sounded like a car. Hey, Jay, it's your father. Look. No, Jimmy, what do we do? See, so he was within the highway patrol. Listen, honey. We're married, and nobody can change that. Oh, he can, Jimmy. I know he can. No, all he can do is spoil our ten days, and I'll be darned if I'll let him do that. Listen, honey, you with me? You know I am. All right, then, come on. This has to be where they are. It just has to be. There. There's Betty Jane's suitcase. Are you sure? There's a cop. What? All right, come on, it's out in the open. Let's go. at 2150, bye. The kids spotted us, decided to duck out. They're headed down the mountain in the boy's car. Bring the duck, meet me at the first fork. I'll try to close in there, 10-4? 10-4, let's go.
You know, you're going to kill somebody driving like that. What's your hurry? Okay, take it easy. You're going to have to get a shot right away, and you too. A shot? Betty Jane, darling, it's all right. You all set, Doc? Come in here, son. Take off your coat. Hey, what's going on here, anyway? Come on, Jimmy. You got nothing to worry about. Let me have your coat. It's all right. And if you love him, I'm glad you married him. I'm sorry I didn't give you the understanding I should have. I want you to know that. And I want Jim to know it, too. Oh, he's all set for you. Officer, is Jimmy going to be all right? Neither one of you have anything to worry about. Here's your coat. Good luck. See you back at headquarters. Sea Highway Patrol next week. Until then, remember, leave your blood at the Red Cross or your community blood bank, not on the highway. This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week.